We'll start out with invocation by Henry, followed by the flag. Lord Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, with open arms and hearts, we welcome you to these proceedings. Satan, get lost and get out. You and your minions are not wanted nor welcome here. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly thank you for the blessings that you bestow on us and pray that you will continue your protection, your mercy, and your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, administrative business, Tina. Okay, the first thing I have are the minutes of June 3rd. Okay. A chance to review those minutes? I have, and I would like to have a correction, please. And that would be under the county um, engineer discussion. I'd like to have that one statement removed, um, second to last line. Let's see what it says. Where he made the motion to approve the contract? No, where it says a licensed professional engineer in the state of Kansas. That's what he read. What he read? That's what Commissioner Becker read. That's the way the motion was stated. That's the way the agreement is stated. Okay, but it's not yet. I mean, it's an all true statement. So, I mean, okay, so I guess you're going to have to clarify to me. So, the minutes are not actually reflective of facts are reflected upon only what is stated, right? Well, when Commissioner Becker made that motion, that's the way he stated the motion. Okay. So, okay. So you're making the minutes based on just what he stated, not knowing that that's not a correct statement. That's what the agreement said, so if it's not correct, no, the then agreement that's doesn't say that. The okay. agreement says that he has uh, three months or something to become licensed in the state of Kansas. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, I, I, to me, it's an untrue statement. I, at this time, I would just remove that little portion. I, I'd hate to put out false information, just okay. not say anything. Um, but if you want to sign something that is not true, that's up to Well, you. that's what it well, said. Well, that's the way the motion was made. And that's the way the motion was made, and that's the way that it is stated in the beginning of that agreement. And I think that's what Mr. Becker was reading from. And so the agreement that was signed does say that at the top. Um, but it does say later in the agreement that he has a, a certain period of time to to get whatever licenses he needs within the state of Kansas. Six, so 60 days. Mm -hmm. But that was the way that I'm to type the minutes. It's my understanding that way, the way the motions are stated, those are supposed to be. That's how I'm supposed to put them in the minutes. So, omitting something that was said during the making of that motion, mm -hmm. unless it's just ums and ahs and you know, impertinent information. Okay, that's on you. Go ahead. Well, that's by. Oh, that's fine. That's, that's, what, that's, that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it's going to be. Maybe. Maybe we should just be a little careful when we make our motions or something. I don't know. Go ahead. It's fine. Go ahead. I just want to point that well, out. I'll make a motion to approve the June 3rd minutes as written. Second. Okay. So moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So Aye. Okay. If it wouldn't have been specifically what he said in, the, in making his motion, I would have no issue with changing that whatsoever. Fine. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. do have a couple of early checks and I need to go grab that quickly for you.
Non early checks. Okay, we've got uh, ambulance utility. Uh, Seventy-two forty-three. Uh, what is the park park and lake? Those are the uh, bluegrass event performer fees. Oh, okay. Performer, oh, performance fee. Okay. Uh, we have one for two hundred. Another one for five hundred. Another one for two hundred. Another one for five twenty-five. Another one for three hundred. Uh, sound for the bluegrass uh, festival at your lake, 600. Another performance, 200. And another performance of 200. So most of them are in regards to the blue. Is that this weekend? Is there a yes. Yeah. Any questions on those? We've got quite a few performers.
Do you have the salary sheet um, just to establish the beginning wage for Bryce Goebel? And then it um, just notes that he will have a review in one year, or yeah. an annual review. So Bryce Goebel, uh, road and bridge engineer, a uh, new engineer with a one year review, initial salary start at $6,667 per month. thing I have um, what's in your packet is the, just the paperwork for the lease purchase that you all approved and I just need the commissioner's signatures on uh, two originals. Okay. This is the lease purchase on the tire cutting machine uh, with the Marion National Bank. packet there was um, an agreement on a, pro a railroad crossing project and on that I don't believe that this has been previously authorized I don't remember seeing paperwork on this before so we would just need um, a motion to approve and then a signature on agreements on those Under the items listed one through whatever there are there. It says the total cost of the project will be funded 100% using federal funds, section 130 funds. But then item number two, it says the county will install and maintain the advanced warning signs. Does that, so does that mean just metal signs? Yes, usually, we, yes. We place yes. while well yes. under construction. No, for forever. Forever, but it's out like a mile or something. Whatever the distance is, yes. A proper set. That's what I thought it was, yes. but I wasn't quite sure. I don't think it's quite a mile. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. A, a distance yeah. before you get there. And this one's such a short turnoff right off Highway 50, that Townsend Ranch right there. Yeah. It's that uh, right where the big barn is, but when this road going east, that's 80th. Okay. So you're going to be turning right off the Highway 50 right into the railroad. So our signs that to be It'll be pretty close. Very it won't close. be no, no very far, like you said. It won't, won't be no half a mile. Or <coughs> okay, that was the only question I had. That's it's it's all federal funds. Yeah, so we need to approve that. We'll make a motion to approve the construction of the railroad crossing at 80th and Pawnee. No, no. It's uh, sorry. Just 80th Street. Oh, there is. Um, 
Yeah, it just says a gift. Yeah. Yeah. There's a project number if you want to use okay. that. I no, thought it you says just rebuild that just a just one a one a year ago. This is all railroad. This yeah, probably this is the railroad down. The project. They're putting this, up this is yeah. a federal federal project. The railroad is putting up Gates. like Stagnal lights and cross all all crossing crossing signals. Yeah. That's wow. do you see um <laughs> there. Doing a, they're doing them all. Yeah. Yeah. Project, uh, make motion project okay. number fifty seven X dash three oh five six dash on one for Okay. Move and second all those in favor. Aye. Okay. And there are three sets. <laughs> and it looks like this just has chairman's signature. It's to stop you from going across that crossing. That's yeah, all right. Hey, uh, you know, uh, that there's, there's, there's one thing I'd really like to say something about, and I don't know if you have anything to do with it. Not that one, but the one a mile east where we call Cornell's Grove. You can't see, I mean, you almost have to make a phone call to go across. If you're going across with, yeah, that they need to do some work fresh yes you can't see it's terribly dangerous even for me <laughs> it, it's bad contact yeah. the railroad give me your complaint i have okay i have and they go well and what they said was well they asked me how many people go go go, go across the road i said well not very very many he said, well, but there's your answer. We can't do anything about it. I drove it without the brush this year, so I haven't driven it since the trees have come out. I, maybe we, if it needs to be, I'll redirect the letter. It's maybe okay, get some it's see, okay yeah. for a vehicle not to drive machinery across. It takes machinery too long to get across. You can't see far enough. Maybe yeah. we could have road and bridge put a counter out there or something. See what the traffic is. Well, there isn't very well, much, but it only takes one. Well, it only takes one. I'll drive it again and see what Randy's talking about, especially coming from the east, coming to west. Yeah, if we need to yeah. put a request. No, no, the yeah, other way. Okay. The other way. Okay. It's from west going east. Okay. Okay. The angle you're doing, like, yeah. Like if you go across this crossing right out here at the combine, if I go across with the combine, I pull up, I stop, I get out, look, go right. But I, I, call, I get right back in, you don't know, think it takes me too long to get back in the tractor. I know. Yeah, I know that too. Okay, <laughs> guys, we, we got to move. Let's, let's because you can't see backwards. Keep, on keep that your thing. comments for the end. Yeah. We've got a place it's just for too you. many trees. I mean, you know, you only got a couple hundred yards of trees. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so the other thing that I have is the we need to set the 2019 uh, fireworks schedule, and so I've just given you a, we've given you a little worksheet there so you can determine when fireworks can be sold and discharged in the county. How late have we gone in the past? Uh, well, I think on the fourth, if it's on a weekend, usually you've gone to like 11 or 12 on that, but. I didn't pull all the past information. I go 10 o'clock, just in my feelings, I go to 10 o'clock down to the Wednesday night before the 4th and make the Wednesday the, before the 4th 11 and uh, Thursday the, you know, it's got a Friday work day behind you. Make it till at least 11.30 time to get out of Peabody. Why there's people, maybe even midnight on the 4th. Yeah, and the 5th I, Head back to 11. It's down. Yeah, but somebody has some other problems with that. You want to make a motion to establish it? Okay. Make a motion that the 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th, first, and the second be 10 p.m. The third, let's just make it third, fourth, midnight, and the fifth back to 11 p.m. Any other discussion? 
I'll go ahead and second that. Then. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that was all that I had for administrative. Okay. Chuck, citizen request. Chuck Seifert. Come on up. Well, I talked to you all the other night at the meeting. He said to come in here and do this formally. I think that the wind generator thing is such a controversy in the, the southern wind generators. It, you need to put it to a vote. 10,000, it's not a, it's a non-binding vote. I didn't realize that. On the landfill, when we didn't vote on the landfill and the casino, those were all non-binding votes. But the commissioners and the, or the zoning slash commissioners, you know, went along with the, with the will of the people on those votes. And I think that would probably just relieve a lot of pressure. <laughs> And people should go with the vote. I mean, that's what, if, if the people want it, okay. If the people don't want it, okay. You know? And I don't know if it's true, but I hear rumors that they're talking, you know, if this one goes through, then there's two more proposals for the county, and we're going to cover the whole county up with them. I mean, we want to think if we taxpayers are getting anything out of it, taxpayers' owners didn't sign anyway. So, well, that's all I know. All I can tell you is the other two are rumors. I've never heard yeah, of Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. That's all I've heard too. But <clears throat> I mean I I mean if we you know it's gonna set a precedent now. I guess we probably already set a precedent now. Yeah. I guess my only just speaking for myself is you know, we have we have processes in place yeah. through planning and zoning. Uh -huh. And you know, if if we would take a take a, a vote on it, to me you set precedent. So anybody that comes forward with a conditional use permit application, I don't care what it's for. Really, we've set precedent. It's got to have to go to vote. Well, I mean, we did it. How's come we did it on the landfill? I, I can't tell you. I was just a I kid. I know you here. weren't here. But we, <laughs> did we did it on the landfill. We did it on the casino. I mean, I don't know why we did it on them either. That was both of them was revenue for the county, substantial revenue for the county. And a few people shut them down. A few people. Not very many people. A few did. Because they stirred the county. Stirred the people against them. <clears throat> well, the casino I never had a shot. I knew, you know, everybody probably did yeah. that. Marion County didn't have a shot. But the landfill, I thought, did have a shot. And now look what the landfill, because of that, what that's costing us. It's costing us a lot of money. Not lost revenue plus what it's costing us as taxpayers right. now to maintain a transfer station. Right. And of course, we all know, you know, what how that all all the events took place. I guess we don't need to rehash who got rich on it and who didn't get rich on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, rich or made money on it. Yeah. Like that way. Chuck, I would some agree with Kent's statement on some of it as far as I the pro too. process of where we how we got started and where we're at. I voted for the first project to see but we had a designed area where it was at this has opened up some things since then um, and time has passed 12 to 13 maybe 14 years even since this is wind farms within the county planning zoning has that when I got on the first time they were working on the regulations already when I got on um, but as what I just said time has passed and come I think this past yay or nay, don't know what's going to, planning zoning is going to say yet, uh, don't know what's going to happen here. But what I'm saying is, I think the idea of what you guys have suggested, bring it to a vote, is probably a thing for as soon as this project is over with, whether yay or nay. I think it's a time maybe that we commission stop and think what do we want for the future of Marion County? And I think a vote is a, is a good thing to see what the public wants for the Marion County. Because I think it could be, we know that there's already agreements signed over in the west half of the county. Uh, we know that for a fact. 
whether whether it be the company that wants to go to McPherson County, we all sell things around here just like cars. Yeah. And so I, I think maybe it's a good time, but I don't think it's good timing right now due to our due process of what we do for this. So that's just my feelings as of right now, Chuck. Make that and I'll say, Chuck, I agree with you. I think what we need to the voters of people is a good idea because of the situation <clears throat> that we have down there is a lot different than the one we had up north. Um, it wasn't near, it wasn't hot and contentious up north like it is down here. And like you said, uh, you know, when do you, what do you want the face of the Marion County to look like in the future? So. And the more you allow to go through the process, the more difficult even putting it to the vote is going to be. So I agree with you. I, I just think that would be a, a smart thing to let all the people have a voice in it. Well, I probably wouldn't be, you know, against it as much as it wasn't. Like I've told people 10 years ago, I wouldn't be against them at all. But Rex soured me. I'll just say it now. Rex soured me on them right there when the county little, little old area zoned four wind generators 10 years ago. And right across the road from me, I couldn't, you know, I mean, I couldn't have them right, right across the road from me. And that was just a little carved out thing. And that's a personal thing, I guess, for me. But I don't think now we're... I just, you know, we don't, <clears throat> the, the, the thing that we need the energy is, is a mute point to me because I drive through thousands of them going out west hunting all year long. I go out west eight, 10 times a year either Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, mm -hmm. and I'll drive through whole wind farms and then there's a breeze blow and they should be turned. They're shut down because, and I assume it's because the grid's full. They're not going to shut the coal plants down. Yeah. You know, the power companies buy all this power from these wind farms for green carbon credits, you know, that's mm -hmm. what they buy it for. Mm -hmm. Because it's still the most highest price electricity to produce. I don't care where they spend it, how they spend it with their turbines, I don't care how they spend it, there's high price electricity because of the maintenance on them and the initial cost of them for what they're producing. So I just they've got I've been soured on them just because of that. And they have covered up that country west of here and south of here and north of here. I mean it's it's saturated. <laughs> I think one part of your statement that I agree with wholeheartedly is there's a different attitude than 11, 12 years ago. Yeah. On, on. Yeah. I think that's but that's basically all I want to thank you for hiring the county engineer. Hopefully that works out. Um, sometime when I have more time, I'll talk to you about trash and recycling. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate your input. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Okay, Bud here. Yep, yep. Morning. Coming. Coming right around the corner. corner. I'm always coming around the corner. <laughs> I need another pilot that I can. Almost sold two of them last week, so. A lot of chemical this year. Yes. You well, almost this, sold two of them. Almost sold. There's only 42 and a half gallons left out of the second one up there, so. Mm, I see. So, we've had a pretty prosperous week on the Dicamp. So, I'm, I'm going to just replace one for now. Okay, this is a chemical bit on Dyke now, but uh, it's like we got two bids from Nutrien Van Dyced. Uh, low bid from Nutrien 592920. <coughs> Do you see the use of Dyke it, It's staying about the same. I mean, we've had a pretty good run on it this year, but that's because the must thistles are strange this year. Uh, they, they, they grow, people spray them, and two weeks later, there's new ones growing. Uh, so, so we have had every time you get a rain, you're going to get more germination. And, and then when the, when the uh, I went out Friday morning in, in the greater ditch out northwest of Dakota County, and half a mile I pulled heads and chopped weeds. So, and it's it's one of them years that it's just going to take over. And stuff. But I mean. The dicamba, you know, people like you that have the pasture for the for the thistles and stuff, and it's a good good herbicide for you. Okay, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the bid on the dicamba from Nutrien. Now five thousand nine twenty nine twenty. Second. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Bank got it. Second. Okay. Yeah. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Another thing I wanted to point out to you, too, I ran across about six full thistle plants out there while I was doing this. And I've had to report that we have a pretty good infestation on the northern county line. I haven't been up there to look yet, but the aerial sprayer out at the airport has asked me about uh, about the bullet thistles, and I told him that that's that's county county appointed not sweet, you know, if if you want. But uh, we need to keep an eye on this all until. But it's still, I don't think it's still not considered an option sweet by the it, state. I don't know. No. I don't know why. But. Well, it, it it's on the list, but it's it's county option. It's what it is. So if you get an infestation, then you guys have the authority to make it Marion County. So we have it on our noxious list. It's it's on the 12 weeds that are that are, that are state noxious weeds. That and multiflora rose are the two that are not on you know. They're county option. Is what I'm trying to tell you. It's it's county option. You're talking about the wild rose. Yeah, multiflora rose. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it's called scientifically. Yeah. Is that the well, name? scientifically, uh, it's yeah. a different name, but that one's too long for me to remember. So. Is that a pink rose? It is a white. It's a white flower. Yeah. I've, I've seen all different roses out in the country, you know, so this one here it would be, if, if we had it, we'd know it. it. It would be spreading faster than any of the other roses we have growing wild out in the country. So. So, but on, on private property, what do you do there when you have an infestation? Because I was going to tell you, as I was coming in today, I noticed just south of Pilsen. Mm -hmm. Pilsen did you notice it mm -hmm. over on the east side? Yep. Horrible. Yeah, it is. Um, and what do we do about that? Well, uh, I send out letters tell them to try to get it done. Last year on that property, we went in and took backpack packs in the wooded area to spray because the gentleman told me he sprayed that area. Now this year, he hasn't even touched it and I've received a phone call from, from the neighbor to the north wanting to know and I said, well, I'm on him. I have, a, I have you know, the, the means that I have to go through. Is that a pond area there? It almost, it's just a, a, just just a, a feeding area where he feeds cattle. Oh, they're up in bloom. Oh yeah. They're just, oh, yeah. They're it just takes, take all of us here in this room a month of Sundays to go yes. to Blooms. And, yes. and, I mean, I, so, I don't know if anybody, I've, I've asked uh, people if they could be go in there and spray for Oh, you said you tried that. I've tried. Nobody goes in. I mean, you know, most of the people who spray, they have the big rigs, you know, or mm -hmm. a pickup. or And then it's, it's going to take a four-wheeler, you know, with a tank on it to go in and spray. Cause, so it used to be in the old days the county would go in and spray mm -hmm. for things like that and then right. assess the bill to the property owner. Right. We can't do that anymore? I, we can. We can? Yeah. yeah, we can. Well, We've even done some aerial spray. We probably right. need to look at that because, yeah. I mean, that's pretty ugly. Right. I mean, it sounds like the whole property needs to be covered. Well, it does. But with, with everything that's in there, you know, it's, it's going to probably be over a week, week and a half get everything sprayed, you know. So what was spot spray, you mean? Yeah, well, you're, you're, if I do it, I'm going to go in there and try to spray the whole thing with mm -hmm. it on and mm -hmm. get it. So we, we've got the two and a half year residual, you know. So we, we just not received any cooperation? Very little from that person. Very little. Ever since I've taken this position over, I've sent him letters. And, and last year, I just finally decided we'd go in there and spray with backpacks, and it took us uh, three days to walk that that eastern part that's in the woods, and and we we didn't get them all, but we got a pretty good kill. But this, like I said, this year's a totally different year. So. Aren't they a two-year plant? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rosettes are in the fall, and then they head out in yeah. fall in the spring. Yeah. So what would the process be to go ahead and have you go ahead and do that? Is there a process, or you just do it? Best process would probably be to go in this fall. The fall is the best time for the rosettes, yeah. cover spray for yeah. a whole area. But in the meantime, uh, in, in the meantime, meantime you're just spreading them now. Yeah, they're, they're getting ready to, to yeah. poof, you know. So, if I could get them sprayed with Escort right now, I could, I could uh, get, the, get the blooms, you know, sterilized. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't produce the seed. But the, a lot of them are 
too far along for that. So is it the due process though? You still have to notify the owner. Yeah. Yeah. I still, still have to. to I still order. have to give the due process, and then I can go in and spray. So we're still looking. Probably 30 days before. So is I the due process more than one letter? Two oh yeah. letters? Oh, yeah. It, I, I have to do the, 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 the first letter, which is a notice, you know, and then I have the, the warning, and then if you want to take them to court, then that happens. Then, but in, in the meantime, usually, if, if I can go in and spray, I can, I can get their permission to go in and spray after the first letter. So when you go in and spray, you just have to walk in, basically. <laughs> basically, it depends on what the property is. Most of this property is going to be walking in and spraying. And I mean, it's a lot of, there's a lot of wooded area. Oh, yes. And that's yes, over half. I hate to put employees with the tick infestation that we've got. We got employees with Lyme disease or something yeah. like that. Ugh. We were pulling off it on average about six or seven ticks a day oh, off of us last year. And this year they're horrible. So yeah. what about aerial spray? Do we have oh, there's too many trees. It would not, it, it would not, not come effective. down through the trees. I mean, yeah. it, it, for one thing, if we did spray the door down, we'd kill every tree out there. So, yeah. You know, and maybe that's what a person needs to do is kill the trees and then kill the nest I mean, I, I feel for the for the farmers around there oh, because do. they've it's come horrible. into my it's my terrible. office you know a couple three times and i the mm -hmm. first time they come in i said well this this just didn't, didn't happen overnight it's been going on for a while how big a parcel is that uh i think it's well what's infested is probably about 57 to 60 acres uh the other is farm ground you know and stuff so. and it's going to be twice that here yeah. And then, like, like the gentleman that called me the other day and asked me if I was aware of it, and I told him yes. And I said, I'm starting the process over again. I said, I, you know, the, the, the main thing that, that I put in, in the letter this year is he will be forced to fall spray this year. We will force him to do it. Either he will do it or, or we will take care of it. So it's, it, there's a process, like I tell everybody, there's a process we have to go through before. Before we can do anything. Yeah. So you pretty much already have in the back of your mind the, the, the uh, troublesome areas that we have. Oh yeah. Um, and they're probably still active today, am I right? Actually, I mean, maybe most, some have been cleaned up. But most of them that I have had problems with that, that was really complained about, they are, they are being taken care of. The, the people, I was getting ready to do a four spray last spring. Uh, northeast part of the county and the gentleman went out there and had it sprayed himself you know, aerial spray and he got a good kill and of course I told him to keep an eye on it and go back last fall and check it out and and, and all, all in all I had a few that have tried to, to buck me on it you know but they, they find out I don't give up very easy so I, I stay on them and and then so then the cooperation is, is turning around. But, you know, since they, they realize that the chemical is available at a decent price to control them, then, then they, okay. I think it would be good if you kept making, kept sending the letters, mm -hmm. even the ones that are working on it. Oh, yeah. Just so they don't lack oh, yeah, up I do. because they take over. Yeah. And that way then if we have to go in and do something, we don't have to wait until the next season. Mm -hmm. We can just act. Well, see, most of these that are growing now are probably seeds that could have been laying them for 15 or 20 years. Yeah. And they They're just decided to, to germinate, you know. They, they're, they're liable for 20 years of that. They can just lay there dormant. Yeah, the wet year will bring yeah. them up. And, and like I said, this year has really yeah. been been hard on us because a lot of guys say, well, we, we've sprayed, and two weeks later we go by and, well, did I miss that one? No, it's just something. And then with the grass this year being so tall, the guys aren't able to see them until they do pop their heads out. And then it's, oh my. So then they're out there pulling heads and spraying or chopping. See, and that's the best way, I, I think. That's what we do. Yes. We're out there, we pull the heads, and then we dig up the plants. I mean, you know, and then we don't, sometimes if we can't do that, we will still pull the heads and okay. spray. Oh, yeah. But we, we always do two things. And, boy, I tell you, we don't have hardly 
But it took us several years to get that. Point. Oh yeah, it, it takes a few years to get there. You can't just. But just spraying and spraying and spraying doesn't seem to be near. Well, effective. the trouble of it is, you need to rope. The, the, the chemicals need to be rotated. Mm. You know, weeds become dormant to. Mm. Or immune you to know, them. Immune to them, and and then just like that one that, that was out east of town here, it was a morphodite. I mean, it had been immune to the to the chemicals, so they changed the chemical and they, they got eradicated. But mm. it. It was a wicked looking plant. There was three of them out there. Really? <laughs> yeah, I have pictures of them hanging on the wall up here at the office. So. But yes, I'm aware of that problem and I was going to bring that to your attention later on as soon as I started the process. Keep on, I guess. That's yeah, that's all I can do. I mean, is our four-wheeler still up and running? Oh, yeah. It's still around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, in between the lake and, and us using it, you know, they got to if they can. Borrow it, so I let them use it. They spray? Yeah, it? they spray around the lake with it and stuff. Uh, so, and then we, we use it when, when we need to, you know, and stuff. You get in that wood, those wooded areas, you better be on one of those, or you're going to, like you said, you're going to be covered up. Well, so this year, even in the wooded area, the grass is probably yeah. three foot tall now. So, mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what's the hard thing is you get, because Friday when I was chopping some, there was anything from 18 inches to, to four foot tall, you know, or five foot tall, uh, the, the, the 18 inches, but they're not bolted yet. They were getting close, but they're not, you know, and, and that's the trouble. What happens when they're 18 to 24 inches tall, do you just mow them down? If they're not seeded out, uh, that's one form of control, but it's yeah. not eradication it's because not eradication. if you don't get below the ground level, they will re-sprout out of that little bit out of the, what's left of what's left above ground. But this person don't even bother to do that. No, no, this person doesn't even bother to. Do no. You ought to see it. It's a oh yeah, it's it's, it's way, it, it is it is up to Pilsner. Yes. Yeah, it just it. You drive by them. Yeah. You can't help because the whole side is pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I don't like seeing that any more than anybody else does. But mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't just walk in there and do what I want to do. You used to say good neighbors make or good fences make good neighbors, plus weed eradication. <laughs> yeah, well, the trouble with these okay. is, is a strong uh, appreciate you staying on staying on top of those. Well, we're trying. Yeah. So it sounds like the process needs to start pretty quick. Like this. It, it already has. I mean, yeah. I, I had him. I thought he, yeah. I thought he had it last year. You know that he was going to go out and fall spray. You know, and I, I didn't get a chance to check up on him, and I should have. But like I said, they, these weeds might be out of new seats. You know? Do you have because like a some kind of file or tickler system? So. You know, it'll remind you, oh, I need to send this guy a letter this fall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got that. Not only do I have it there, but it's okay. up here, too. Okay. So, anyway. All right. Thank you, Brian. All right. One of the things yes. is Roger Holter's back this week. He was on vacation all last week. Okay. So I want to stop in and talk to him and give him the engineer thing up there and stuff that happened. Okay. So so they can work back and forth. You need, that, you need that information? For yeah, I'll get with you this I'll afternoon get, after I get, get here. Okay. okay. That'll work. Thank you. All right. Okay. 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 Is uh, CDDO here? gratitude um, for your support over the years. This is uh, our 12th time here to request funds as, as uh, Harvey Marion County CDDO, and we're in a transition phase. Um, we're going to be I'm going to be passing the baton to, to a new director when that person is on board. And um, I can't tell you how, how much I have appreciated your support over, over the years um, with the 
founding our organization and the support that we've received. So during that period of time, we've had a lot of growth. Um, move on to the second page of our handout. Um, you can see we're the place to contact um, for developmental disability ser services for Harvey and Marion counties. And um, when we started um, our first year, fiscal year 2008, we had 182, and now we have 285 people <coughs> we serve in our two counties. And that's up from 281 last year. Um, of those, 54 or 19% uh, reside in Marion County. And um, the total uh, we have that received targeted case management is 230. And we have 61 who live with their family and receive personal care service that's in attendant care uh, for children and for adults. There are 113 adults that receive day service and 87 that receive residential. And uh, sadly, our waiting list continues to grow. It's now up to 113, and that's up from 96 last year. That waiting list is, is, um, is uh, a waiting list that's statewide, and so the number you see there is the number of the people that are from our two counties. But statewide, um, there's around 4,000 people that are waiting statewide for services. And we just got word um, <coughs> end of last week or two weeks ago that, that uh, they're going to be um, bringing people off of the waiting list and those are people that were waiting since 2011. So it's about an eight year wait for, for services. Ages of those waiting lists can be more? Um, people can be waiting um, from age five on up. So and we have people on pretty much all ages. So, that's um, kind of what those numbers look like in terms of the money that we get to do what we do um, um, from Marion County, um, 65000 from Harvey County, 102500 We receive from the state of Kansas state aid, and we receive 151416 You can see that's been flat for the last four years. And it's less than we got 12 years ago. And then for CDDO administration, um, we're at 149347 and that also has been flat for the last four years. And it's higher than 12 years ago, but it's gone down from as high as it was. And so what that means for administrative services, um, if you figure it out per capita, we now get $524 per person per year for what we do and we used to get uh, 656 12 years ago so we're we're being leaner and more efficient doing what we do um, our state aid dollars all of those flow through into our local finance plan for um, different services and supports including um, support for the first to three programs in both counties and um, respite care program and um, discretionary funded uh, supports and also transportation subsidy. What do you see for state aid going forward? I see it. I see it being flat. I don't see any change. And then if we look specifically at things that uh, that have happen in Marion County as a result of, of investments. Um, we process new applications for 24 people, and, and there were six of those from Marion County. Um, we do random draw on site quality assurance visits every quarter. We did those for 16, and two of those were for people in Marion County. And um, we continue to support a family that lives in northern Marion County. For transportation expenses to bring an adult to a pickup point um, to meet the bus for day services in Newton. One of one family in Marion County received respite care through Trinity Heights respite care program at no cost to the family. 
and there was a youth on the waiting list that received attention here in the family home. There was an individual that's not eligible for can care that got case management services. And um, we subsidized transportation expenses for nine people. And five of those nine were self-directed services. Um, self-directed is a model in which uh, rather than picking a company, um, usually a parent or guardian um, decides to be the one who hires and trains the staff. And then you work with another company called a financial management service that does the background checks and the payroll. <coughs> So it's a way to have more, more direction, more, more choice of, of who works with your family member. Uh, last year we covered tuition costs for two adult interns to be in the Tabor College Project Search Program. And we're gonna do, uh, do another commitment this next year for an adult intern to be in the program. Then I wanna take a little bit of time to talk more about that program. Um, are you familiar with the Tabor College Project Search Program? Yes, I was a mentor. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. This is um, one of the most uh, exciting developments I've seen um, in Marion County for people with developmental disabilities. Um, since I got started, I heard families talk about how much they wanted their children to grow up and have a future in Marion County and not have to be shipped to another county or move to another county to have services and supports. And so this was really parent family driven and there were interested families who approached the uh, Northview Developmental Services Endowment Foundation uh, for funding. They asked for a startup grant to start a project search program in Marion County. And this program is unique in that it provides Immersion learning in the real world business setting to learn work skills. You know, you could go, you don't learn how to do a job in school, okay? None of us learn that. <laughs> you learn work in the real world working. And for people with developmental disabilities, that part of learning is the same. You can go to a sheltered workshop, but that's not the real world. So, um, um, this model, you have a host business, and Tabor College agreed to be that host business and uh, they provide um, the interns an opportunity to work in different departments at the college. And there is a special ed co-op teacher who is the project search instructor. That teacher meets with all the interns at the beginning of the day and then at the end of the day. And then in between, they're in their internships, learning work, and they work in the maintenance, in food service, in the uh, materials management program, um, in, uh, in the athletic department, um, in the library, in the historical library. Um, and, they, and this last year they started an internship in the J shop. And those students, it's amazing the transformation that happens over that nine month period of time. In J shop, that's the um, college bookstore where they sell oh. books and t-shirts and art. <laughs> memorabilia. <laughs> J-A-Y. Oh, J-A-Y shop. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And um, it's exciting to see the transformation in those young people that happens over that period of time. Well, you need to know there was a startup grant for this program, and that startup grant is fading back. And so the program is looking for funding for sustainability for the long haul. And um, I can't tell you um, how important this is. Uh, you know, we as Harvey Marion County CDO want to find a way we can commit some of our Marion County funds to partner to help sustain that program. And um, the first year there were three interns, they all got jobs, and then this last year there were six, and um, five of the six had jobs at the end of the year. Well, I don't know if the sixth has yet or not. And, and uh, several of them have been hired by Tabor College. Now, that's not the point of it, that everybody gets hired by Tabor College, but they are equipping young adults to be productive, contributing members of the community and invest back in the community. And it's also building a life for that person, you know, here in their home area, you know, in their home community. And that's what we want. That's what we want. So it's a really a win-win um, type of a program. 
and so I want to respectfully ask for for a continuation of the, the same amount of funding and then I also want to ask if, if there is any increase just so you know that, that we would we would want to direct that towards the Tabor College Project Search Program because we want to ensure its its sustainability. Speaking from experience with the mentorship that I did, it, 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 it's pretty amazing. Yeah. From a yeah. little girl that I, I mentored started the year to where she came yes. at the end of the year. Yes. That just blew me away. Yes. You know, and all of those kids kind of started out with little hope to where they came out the end kind of looking forward to life again. I mean, and Mr. Hogg over there, he just does a tremendous job. I mean, he's, amazing just, job. he's vested into that. He really yes. is. Yes, he's deeply committed. And the college has fully embraced this program, you know, as part of their mission. I mean, President Lanzer, you know, the, you know, comes to the, the graduation uh, uh, program. You see the, the Taylor College Project Search Facebook on screen now, and there, there's some different, different pictures there that you can see. Yeah, the commencement was just like a commencement for any anybody else. It was pretty neat. Yes. I didn't get to attend that this year. I didn't yeah. get to that one. Yes. So, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, have enjoyed coming back to the board. What I've seen is progress in the board since I left. <coughs> this program is one of them that you're talking about, Kent. I, I too got to go over and we had a little process, little, they had a little program for us on the board. And uh, what I seen in the kids was excitement, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just, they, they, was, they was nervous, <laughs> they was very excited though to be presenting a program to the board or anybody because it was that was recital for something else yes it was it was yes, recital it was. yes yeah and so anyway we had a good time that day and uh -huh. and that's something when we started this we didn't have too much in Marion County it's been tough to get things over in Marion County so uh -huh. but that's something that has started and it's, it's a good deal and I agree with you wholeheartedly yeah. to that second of all what I seen when I come back to the board this year uh, or last, whichever it was, uh, two board members that we have here present taking the initiative to be on the board and doing a good job. With that initiative, they've taken and they're on a board now to be on a transition team. Both of you, or I know Deidre is. Yes. And Jared, both of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, and Jared has been the acting chairman for the last <coughs> year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, didn't know how far back. Mm -hmm. But we have some. Good board members that's taken the initiative to do things, and I want to say thank you. That's what I want to say uh, because I searched and searched when we started this, and I don't know if even when Liz first got on that sometimes getting a board member to take act and, and be a board member is tough. So for her to go to Newton all the time, and uh, you know we bring it over here once a year, and then sometimes when you bring it over here the Commissioner goes over there and forgets that it's over here. So that just happens. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I did that. So, so anyway, thank you to the board members. Thank you to Liz for the years that I've worked with you and and know that. And I think Commissioner Holland would double what I have to say too. So uh, he was with you over there for quite a while yes, too. So thank you for that. And I hope we can find a good replacement. So that's what we're looking for. These people are. We're in charge, and I'm going to back them. Whatever we have to do to help sure. them. So, sure. so anyway, thank you, Liz. And if I could, I just sure. publicly wanted to thank Elizabeth. You know, she's the go-to person in the state of Kansas. She's a very, very respected person throughout the state, and so for us to try and and, and fill her shoes is going to be a very, very <laughs> tall task to fulfill. And also with Project Search, you know, just publicly, you can't thank Tabor enough and President Glancer for allowing this to happen. The interaction between the Tabor students and, and these interns and the skill sets that they're learning and, and being productive in society. I mean, what, what, how could you ever ask for anything better than someone being productive in, in our society with jobs and that kind of stuff? 
you know, they get that shirt and just that smile that puts on their face and, and to see how they grow from the beginning of the year. They look down at the ground when they talk to you. By the end, they're looking at you. When they do the presentation, one of them went on for what, 45 minutes? Yeah. Just, you know, and, and it's just, just such a, a, a blessing to see these, these people grow and become a productive part of society. So anything you would give to keep this program sustainable, we would greatly thank you and, and we greatly thank you for what you do currently. So. I just would like to thank Elizabeth for the wonderful job she's done. And like Jared mentioned, she has been there a long time with the turnover through the state. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to, through Elizabeth, provide consistency. And um, it is going to be hard to replace that. And But I think the board. I have seen, I've been on the board now for two terms, because mm -hmm. mine ends actually, and the growth, like mm -hmm. Randy said, in the board, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's become a lot more active, the members are more active and proactive, and um, I really had a good experience. There's one other thing that I guess I didn't say that I saw too, is when I first got on the board, uh, they said, well, why don't you go out with uh, the field home audits and, and attend that. That is, that is inter very interesting and stuff like that, too. But to see what I saw the other day in the presentation, this recital that we went to, I saw the other kids helping their own. Yes. Now, that is something that is, they wasn't, it's, it's me. They, there was some they was holding up posters and they needed help some some of the others would jump up and hold them for them and, and so it, it really uh, what I saw that was a community out of that program over there in Hillsboro so yeah there's no no doubt in my mind even though I know there wasn't no student from Hillsboro there this year was there there was yeah there was there were two, two, stu a a two, two, two yeah. students there was from Mary, yeah. Yeah. Mary and Florence mm -hmm. and Paul Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they're from all over. But anyway, it yeah. was they was one was from Texas or Oklahoma that I you know was going to go back to Oklahoma as soon as the program was over mm -hmm. with and stuff. But it was a good deal. But I saw the excitement of helping one another, and that's I think that's a plus. Yeah. Well, and just their ability to present. Yeah. Like yeah. Jared said, yeah. I mean, the board can be intimidating for okay. anyone, and sure. they, I was so excited and proud to see how they handled that. Yeah, I know in, the, in that graduation, of course, they had it in that huge auditorium. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Those kids were pretty proud to stand up and speak in that big auditorium. Yeah, they were. They yeah. were. Yeah. Very true. So, I'm done. So this, the, the, the funding that we provide for search, that's included in the 65000 Yes. Yes. And do we know how many interns are going to accept or have applied for the coming year? Next year? Um, they've accepted three so far, and there's a couple of other possibilities. So they're looking at a class similar to? I think it'll be five or six. It'll be similar. Yeah. And some of them are high school students that, that are on an IEP. They're still in public school. Right. And then this program also supports adults up to age 30. And so that's where we've partnered to pay uh, what, what they call um, a, tu a tuition uh, fee um, because they're, they're not eligible for school funds for, right. for categorical aid or the, the funds that the special income. So we know at least one. Right. At least one funded adult. Yeah. Do, do we know what the program is cutting back is? I mean, do we see the I don't see it in the report what it's. I have to go back on my sheets. What the program cost and what's going to be cut back out of it this year? Oh, what from the Northview Board? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I believe Jared for there. fiscal year 2020, Dr. Shepard from the Marin County Special Ed co op is the. Um, Administrator, he's the go-to numbers guy, and I believe he told me that it's a seventy thousand dollar a year to fund it, 
and um, I believe that Marin County Special Ed will have to come up with $27,000 for um, fiscal year 2020. And then next year it'll cut back even more. And so, yeah, where to get this money? Because, you know, the state and, and that kind, you know how they're cutting back and, and money is, is, is tight. So uh, that's our concern, is, is raising the money to keep this, you know, going. Yes, Jared is, is also on the Special Ed Co-op Board, is that right? Yeah. American yeah. Special Ed Co-op Board, so he's familiar with, with, well, with that. Well, it costs 70000 for the search program. Yes. And, and yeah. Special Ed funds twenty seven of that. So where's the rest coming from? From Northview North Development, yeah. the grant. The it was a five-year grant. And, 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 is it's, it's, and it, it, every year it backs off a little. It backs off a little. Yeah. Do you know how much it's going to be backing off for the... For 2020, yeah, it'll be 47,000. It'll be backing off, or they'll, they'll be funding 47,000. 47, We've got to come up with 27,000. They'll be providing 47,000, and then in year four, it'll back off even more yeah. to yeah. to zero, unless you know they're able to come up with some funds or do something and reallocate money to that. So that's 54,000 and you cost. Seventy thousand. So you got sixteen thousand there that you have to basically yeah. come up with. Well, like I said, Dr. Shepard, he's the go-to person on the exact numbers mm -hmm. and, and how that all works. But yeah, and Tabor College doesn't provide dollars; they provide the facility. The facility the and that's huge. Well, yeah. I mean, when you look at what we do for only seventy thousand dollars, it's very, very efficient. Yeah. Yes, and, the, and they, but thanks to the yeah. generosity of Tabor. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'd like to put it down for our uh, budget deal and see what take a look at what we can possibly do. Yeah, it'd be not. It would be a. I think it'd be a blessing if we could bump that up a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and make the whatever we bump it up go to what this yes. is. Uh, right. Yes. That project. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We that certainly want to take that yeah. under advisement. Then. Thank, 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 thank you. you for your willingness yeah. to thank do you that. Guys. Sure. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so I guess we need to act on the funding request. No, no, no. no. Don't we have just, to. No, we don't do that until you go through your budget prep process. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for update. Thank you for your service. You're Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be good. Okay. Thank you. We'll work on getting you a replacement so you can go off to the greener pasture. Right? <laughs> yes, that's okay. Thank you. Okay, Joel, you got your quarterly update for us? Yes. Let's take a seat here. Oh, Joel, I have. I stopped by one day and she wasn't in the office, so nice to meet you. Glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. And again, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm not exactly ever done a quarterly update yet, so if there's something that I miss or don't speak on, please ask questions, I'm sure you will. Okay. Um, but first I'd like to say that how blessed I was to come into Marion County and have the staff and support that I do have, um, not only in my office, but just throughout the courthouse and everybody that's involved. So coming into a job like this, you don't know who, who you're going to be working with exactly and how well you are going to be supported, but I would like to... Thank everybody here at the yes. courthouse as well as my staff. Yes, they do a good job. Um, and so, looking at, I think probably you're wondering what, okay. where we're at as far as yeah, cases that have been filed. Um, as of year to date, we are a little bit down with what our criminal cases have been filed last year. We filed 285 criminal cases. Right now, we are at 89. Um, so we are down, but I think that is partially due to. Um, a little bit of a traffic jam that happened, having three county attorneys be in the office this year, um, some of them just not being filed, um, and I think people kind of putting things off until whoever it was that was going to get the new county attorney position came in and give them to that person. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. so, um, so I have a number of cases that are still waiting to be filed that are sitting on my desk that just need to be reviewed and then be filed, so those numbers aren't exactly as accurate as they probably could be, but um, I don't think that it'd be exactly half. But um, as we know that when summertime comes, summer's a little active and 
criminal law, so I imagine those numbers will be jumping up a little bit as well um, throughout the summer. Traffic cases are about, there were 677 last year, we're at 298 this year. Um, juvenile cases were 32 last year, we're at 11. Um, sink cases, child and needed care cases, were actually probably up on those. There was 37 last year, we're at 26 right now. And then care and treatments um, are up. There was 19 last year, we're at 18 this year. There have been a number of, it seems like a revolving door. Um, also, a lot of Lauren, where people coming in and going back, and um, just been dealing with that. But um, so that's where we're at. Um, and I mean, as you know, the county attorney is responsible for kind of how, as are responsible for what happens to, to the cases and how they get blood out or what happens. Um, and so 285 cases is a number of cases. I think the, the numbers that they talk about with the uh, Kansas Bar Association and, and different enti entities, a prosecutor handles about 250 cases a year. That's about the number that they can really get through and the time and attention that a case needs. Obviously, um, your higher level cases, your off-grid cases with child sex crimes and things take a lot more time than than a theft or you know misdemeanor cases, traffic cases, you know, put the time into them. So, um, depending on the number of cases that do get filed, how much time can you put on those cases? Um, and those cases are going to get dealt with one way or another, whether that be going to jury trial or to getting flat out. About 95% of your cases do get flat out, um, and there are some hours in a day that you can deal with cases. So, if you don't have the time, they're going to get bled out. They may not get bled out to the degree that maybe I want them to get bled out to, but um, the alternative would be going to trial and, and not being prepared as you probably should be because just the time of the day that hasn't happened yet. Um, that, that's not what I, what I want to happen. Um, so I've been dealing with law enforcement and I'm changing a couple things on how I think we're going to be pleading some, some things out. Um, as far as the methamphetamine cases, um, I think Marion County does have issues with methamphetamine, just like everywhere has an issue with methamphetamine in, in the state of Kansas. I've been in, all over the state, you know, defending and prosecuting cases, and there's not a shortage of issues with people dealing with methamphetamine. Um, trying to get those people to treatment, trying to curb that, um, dealing with people differentiating between users and distributors, um, dealing with those kind of people differently. I think they're differently situated and I think one causes more of a problem than the other. Um, so I think that's where we're at right now. Um, if there's what, what type of percentage of these cases ever go to trial? I mean, just from my own point of view, that in the last year, I've been called for jury duty, and yeah. of course it was canceled. My wife's been called, I think, three times, and they've all been canceled. I'm just kind of curious, what percentage actually make it to jury trial? And I couldn't tell you what Mary County's is right now. Um, I haven't had a jury trial here yet, but I've been here, you know, three, a little over three months. Um, I have, with the backlog of cases, some of those did get continued as it's coming in and trying to prepare for jury trials after a week of being here it just wasn't very realistic um, so that is why a number of those cases here recently have been continued some due to me some of them due to, to, to defense continuances um, but 95 percent is really the the number that they have um, i've had a number of bench trials that have gone to the trial that way the um, jury trials I don't know how many trials were done last year um, in Marion County, but I would say that there would probably be, I would say five probably jury trials that would probably get handled in front of your realistic number. And that's not including bench trials. Right. Anybody else have anything yeah. for Joel? Yeah. Uh, Joel, I'm looking to back you up and hope you are the best in, in this world here. I'm glad to see you back here and everything. But I'm also looking for somebody to blame. Okay. And when you say plead out, you, when you say plead out, you're the one that has to be happy, correct? As a county attorney with to plead a case? Yes and no. Yes and no? Okay. <laughs> um, 
That's a lawyer's answer. <laughs> <laughs> That was the kind I give. Um, <laughs> a lot of times plea negotiations end up where nobody's happy. Um, and honestly, that's probably the sign of a good plea. That, okay. Okay. Um, defense isn't happy, and I'm not happy. Um, you know, and plea negotiations aren't like buying a car. You know, you don't just meet in the middle. Okay. A lot of times it deals with how much evidence do we have. The better the evidence that we have, the better the plea obviously is going to be. Um, the, you know, and it's, I'm not saying the law enforcement did anything wrong, I'm saying there's amount of evidence, just some cases you just don't have the evidence um, for whatever reason. And you've got to not get as good a plea that you want. You know what they did, I know what they did, but can I prove that beyond a reasonable doubt at trial? And beyond a reasonable doubt at trial is a very high burden. Um, and so I've got to look at that. Can I, do I think I can get that? Just because I don't think I can get that doesn't mean I'm not going to go to trial. But, that's going to be how I deal with, with pleas. And just because I know somebody did something and I plead it out, I'm not going to be happy that I've got to plead it out, but that's kind of what I've got to do. One thing you did say in that same token that you was talking about is plead out, um, how much it costs the system to process a, a case. And apparently you look at that too, quite a bit too, for whatever the crime is, if it's a slow crime, and it's going to cost them. Well, you, the taxpayers, it's going to cost them so much. Why that becomes an issue, and and so I understand that. It's just uh, it's all part of the things that you look at to plead a case out because that's the ones that get criticized quite a bit in the public. Is right. well, they just let them do this, let them do that. So right, and it and it is. I mean, it's not. That's obviously not my main concern. I don't right. want to say that I don't right. care about what taxpayers no. do, but that's not my, my main concern of what, sure. you know, if the case has to go to trial, it's got to go to trial, whatever that may cost. Okay. Prosecuting crimes is not a money-making business, as you get. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for your answers. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Neil. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. Good. Okay, are the fact people with us? Yes. Okay. Back. Hello. Good morning. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Good morning. This is Terry Biebermeyer. He has come on to back to help. You can sit here and all this support. He don't want to be put in the hot spot yet. <laughs> he has come on to back to provide overall leadership and write the grants so that I can help more with marketing fact and also with our substance abuse prevention coalition because those take those are I can do that with little office time and still spend time with my family and my kids so I'll let Terry tell you a little bit about himself really quick before we get started well I'm as she said Terry Biebermeyer um, I'm a retired teacher I've taught for almost 40 years in uh, different uh, public schools, the latest of course, the last 30 years have been at Hillsboro. I have an English major and Spanish major and so that's primarily what I've been teaching that with forensics and debate. That's how I got into grant writing in the first place um, before I ended up where I am now. Um, my wife teaches or works at the health department, Lori, uh, some of you know her. and so. Um, Anyway, I'm looking forward to the um, experience that I'll get here and whatever I can do to further what Ashley has done with um, fact. And so anyway, I'll turn it back to her just at the yes. moment. So we have a couple different things. Um, number one is I was just here in the spring to present on fact, so I'm not going to go through everything we do again, but we do have um, booklets for you all again in case you lost yours. Um, so we're just thankful that you guys continue to support us because you, the county, the $6,000 that you all give us every year, that goes into our undesignated fund and that's um, where we struggle because of, uh, otherwise we have to have grant funding to do that and so we obviously are always looking for grants and Terry's in the middle of writing grants as we speak. Um, but we basically get the $6,000 from you all and then from the school districts each of them donate 2500 a year and so that's 
basically the only support that we get that's in, that's ongoing and incoming each year to keep us going, to keep our lights on and to keep staff on. It doesn't pay for all of it, um, but obviously we get donations from churches and stuff like that, but it's not ongoing and committed. Oh, and the City of Marion also, uh, uh, they have agreed for, they have agreed to contribute $1,000 every year. Um, and so that's nice. We're helping to get more cities to get on board with that. Um, so we sent a letter in for a formal request um, this to get our funds for this year just recently. So um, I'm just hoping that, I don't know really what a formal request is, but I'm hoping to do that for next year, for 2020, so that we can be secure in our funding for the $6,000 um, is what we're hoping to keep. Um, so yeah, you guys can just let me know what I need to do to make that formal. Or if I just need to submit another letter next year or what. Well, how if you've we already it. submitted. Well, that was for this year. Okay. I'm talking about yeah, next year because that's what you're working on, your budget right? 2020 yes. will start on, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you can just submit that. The letter. As you, as you have in the past. Okay. Yeah. Um, usually, once they consider the budget and they've set the budget, um, what um, they, they would make a formal approval of. So just like in January, we would send the letter yeah. over. Okay, yeah. so remember that in January, we'll send the letter over. So yeah, we are thankful for your continued support for that. Um, and then the next thing we wanted to talk about was the special alcohol tax fund. We saw the article in the paper about that um, for the treatment center, the new treatment center here in Marion. And so Terry has some the expenditures that we've spent over the years from the special alcohol tax. So this is where all the money has been going. I want you all to keep in mind that FAP doesn't get a single penny of that special alcohol tax. So basically we are donating our time to be the fiscal agent to manage that fund. And then the coalition, um, basically what we do is we get the requests from the schools. You'll see on there all the after prom parties, um, different like school programs. They send in a request, a written request and then to us and then we um, show that to all the coalition members at our meeting and then they either approve or not approve those requests. So you'll see on there, I mean, this is all prevention. And um, one thing I just wanna say is that I don't mind if you all want to spend some on treatment, I think that's awesome too, but I don't think we need to just leave prevention out because you're too late. If you're only focusing on treatment, you're too late. You need to focus on prevention too. So pretty much everything goes to school programs, um, as you can see on there, and uh, law, some law enforcement training for enforcement officers that are on our coalition. Well, any. We've paid for people that even, like from the sheriff's office, that even aren't on our coalition. So, um, yeah, if you can look at that over and see if you have any questions. But that's what's coming out of this fund, and that's what will, you know, would need to continue to be funded somehow. So. But yearly, you. You do yearly, you don't have a yearly income, do you? I mean, we have just the yearly that you guys get from us, but that's for fact. The coalition, yeah. that's the only funding they get is the the special alcohol tax. So unless, unless we get some. Grants. Unless we get a grant, yeah. yeah. But this total of thirty-three thousand goes for back to two thousand twelve, right? Yes, because this is ever since we start fact started getting the quarterly checks from the special alcohol tax. That's yes. we just wanted to pull it all up from every single penny that we've spent since we started getting the special alcohol tax. So seven years, or uh, 12, to like seven years, you know, 35, five thousand a year, I mean. It's, yeah, it's usually between two four and five thousand dollars a year. Dollars a year. Yes. 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 yes, exactly. And so when we, um, when we um, apply for grants, you know, when you apply for grants, you always have to prove that you have community support. That's the first thing they ask you on the title page of a grant. And so we always say, well, our coalition manages the special alcohol tax fund because then they know that your county believes in you too. So that's, I mean, that's an important piece. I agree that is an important piece. Yes. But I would say that the, the treatment mm -hmm. is a big important piece. I agree with that I mean, too. Once you've got the problem, and I've heard it just in the last week right. about the seriousness of the drug problem that we have in Marion County, as right. other counties do. Right. It's very serious. 
And so, I mean, to me, at this point in time, I understand prevention of uh, problem parties and school programs. I mean, that's nice. Uh, but when you know you have uh, somebody that needs treatment, uh, I just think that that can't be a little either. All right, I totally agree with that. Is Prairie View in the budget, in the county budget? So what's the difference in Prairie View and this treatment center? I don't really know, honestly. I have no idea. I mean, I know they both provide treatment, but I think Prairie View's maybe in Harvey County. Well, yeah, it's not quite as in detail as this okay. one is right here. And this one is, um, they provide a lot of new services and things to the community okay. for treatment. Right. They go really in deep in okay. depth with the treatment. Okay. So it, it just seems to me like they would be more comparable to a treatment center like Prairie View not, I mean, maybe I'm saying they do more, but like that they should be included in the budget, in just the general budget, and then the pennies, the special alcohol tax, the coalition can still manage, or at least some of it, is what I would suggest. Because I don't feel like we're the same. I mean, we're just a coalition with representation all throughout the county, just trying to do good things in the county, trying to do prevention, whereas, a treatment center I mean that's completely different and they're on our coalition joy actually joined and we bought her a breathalyzer, breathalyzer. Mm -hmm. yes and that's what we told her we said we don't even get twelve thousand dollars in a year <laughs> from the special alcohol tax right. mm -hmm. so we would be happy to help you all with anything you need and that's one thing she came up with um, and we said if there's a family or you know a, somebody who's 18 to 20 or you know younger that's needing treatment, we would be happy to pay for some of whatever their costs are when they come in, you know, if she wanted to do that, she was she was happy with that, you know. I mean, obviously she needs more than what we can give, but that was my thoughts. Can I, do, do you know the statues, or is there any statues telling, well, uh, you don't have to give them now, but I'm just saying, there is statues, the reason why we are part of the, uh, what you said, the Prairie, View, yeah, Prairie, Prairie View, why we have to pay them okay yes there are statutes surrounding the special alcohol tax and if you remember a few weeks ago you were going to have Brad look into re kind of research all of that and summarize okay. it for okay. you so that you're okay. uh, basically part of what I have read in the statute is once you establish a coalition like we have here that requests are are routed through that coalition and so um, and I know that well, perhaps that was in 2012, but it's been quite some time since you, um, as a commission, took a formal action to have FACT administer these funds. Yeah. And so Brad was going to look to see if he wanted to make changes or what that structure needs to look like if you were to change your, your method of allocation, right. what action would have to be taken. Well, I guess I forgot, but I asked that question when I come on this commission and Carol was here of why we had to pay Prairie View and at that time Northview. It was not Harvey County CDBO, it was Northview. And so there were statues <coughs> pertaining to what? Oh, to funding the mental to the health funding organization? The, yes, or? yeah. And I was thinking it was also in t with relationship to alcohol, the reason why Prairie View was 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 funded is the reason why. That could be. I don't know initially how that started, so I guess I'm not aware of that. Well, we'll talk to Brad when he gets here or whenever and see if there's, because if there was some reason why that we was had to fund. A, both of them, when I first come on the board, I asked that question, and then it was, must have been answered, and apparently I forgot. <laughs> so we need to find out why, again, that yeah. we fund what we do. And I know it's not not in the past as far back as you went there, Randy, but I know uh, it, since I've been on the board, we haven't had a treatment center here in there, right. an actual treatment yeah. center, was now we do. And I do know that uh, the statute does also reference treatment centers uh, that are required to have some as well. This is why I was thinking yeah. the Prairie View was why we paid them. That's that's why I was thinking that not only mental health but alcohol. And that was the treatment center for that's designated. Why, for yeah, designated County. before all of fact or any of them. That's and I think that's the reason that was presented to me at that time. That's that's why I say you know it's good to find out uh, what uh, what exactly is. Yeah, that could be right. I'll, I'll yeah, so, that's all right. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess Brad, Brad is mm -hmm. going to be checking into that. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, go ahead and make your request. 
so yeah we're just hoping to for our coalition to keep managing that fund um, obviously we hope that you all believe in our coalition and um, we'd be happy for any of you to join come to our meetings um, yeah that's about all we have we're just hoping that we'll continue to get our funding for fact for next year for 2020 the six thousand dollars and then also um, the special al alcohol tax that the coalition still manages all of it or at least part of it for provision so, also um, we were whenever we got that in 2012 coming to the coalition to me or to fact to manage for the coalition um, it was stated that we cannot spend that on any administrative at all so you know that's been that's why a lot of it is surface level honestly because we really can't like we could maybe do an evidence-based program in the schools or something like that but you're gonna have to pay someone to teach those things to go into the schools and teach the curriculum and stuff so that's why a lot of it is just for school programs to um, basically apply for funding and then the coalition approves it so just so you all know it's not because we don't want to do more it's just that when there's limitations that we can't do administrative stuff then that's kind of where that that falls so, so as far as actual treatment where do you stand on treatment in Marion County treatment I agree that we need treatment and I agree that there's a huge problem in Marion County which mm -hmm. is why I think our coalition needs to continue doing what we do too mm -hmm. because there's a it, it there is a big problem in there Marion is. County yes. you, know, you gotta start out young yes okay. so, well thank you guys for thank your time you. today thank you for coming by okay well, thank you thank you yes. I'll give you guys these okay. just so that and these are our newly updated um, family resource directories that we dispersed throughout the county. Does anybody else need one? I just need a counter here. Oh, and a card. Um, Terry did leave some of these here at the courthouse for families. Um, and then we also take them to doctor's offices, city offices, anywhere families that are new to the county come. So I don't know if you guys want one. Are new. And if you ever come across any family that needs anything, I mean, anything, we specialize in referrals. So even if we can't help them with family financial assistance, we can send them on and find somebody who can help them. Yeah, I know so, the last time he was in, you used to tell us about some of the things that you right for families. That yes. Need to yes, we do a lot for families. So, all right, thank you guys very thanks, much. Thanks, have, have, a good day. have a great day. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Dave, Dave, you know. Is Dave here? Yep. Morning, Dave. Hi, ready for us? Yeah. Morning. Appreciate it. Morning. Morning. Right over here, Dave. Oh, somebody's going to sit. You get your hot seat, Dave. Oh, yeah. I got to sit in Somebody has to sit there. So we're ready to go. Well, appreciate, appreciate your time today. Um, David Mueller, uh, I'm landowner liaison with the Hell Green Power at Diamond Vista. Uh, we don't want to take up a lot of your time, but I know early on we were supposed to run everything through the consultant, but we feel at this time it'd be good for us to give you an update as we're winding down the project, answer any questions, let you know what we're doing with the roads and the progress. So first I'd like to introduce Blake. Uh, he can give you a little more background on the investment in the roads and what we're doing with the road situation. And so regarding investment, we got about 45 miles of uh, road improvements, um, which is equivalent to about $6 million with the culverts, the aggregate, and the cement stabilization. Does that include your work around the... No, the no that was just, just roads. County, county roads. Okay. There's another 26 miles of access roads. So that investment is just on county roads. Do you have any documentation on which roads those are? Yes, ma'am. I can get that for I'd you. I appreciate it. Yep. And go into the detail, maybe a little bit about the subcontractor coming in to do road work. Yes, we got uh, a subcontractor coming in towards the end of this week. We'll start mobilizing and uh, we'll start uh, upgrading some more of these roads, an additional seven miles, and uh, installing some coal and pipe uh, for you guys. As you've heard from Kirkham, Michael, there are issues. I mean, it's been construction. There's culverts that need to be fixed. There's yep. still repair work needs to be done. But Anel is committed not only to the on-site team, but they're actually bringing in a whole separate contractor. And that's all they will do is focus on the roads yep. and getting those issues resolved. 
I'd like to introduce Reno. He's our site our site manager. I don't want to give you project manager <laughs> promotion, <laughs> but he'll give you a little update on the, the I'm Reno. progress. Yeah, I'm in charge of uh, this project. I'm Italian, so my English is not so. But I like uh, I like to to talk by by numbers. So this is a, let's say this is the situation from January in front. I know, I know the, the landowners are disappointed with the, with the progress we had, but uh, unfortunately the situation of weather uh, stopped us in many, in many sites and we don't have very, very big performance. And this is let's say, the progress, the actual progress <coughs> we have. So we are about 40%, we're talking overall, overall. So we're talking about the, the, the wind turbines, we're talking about also the T-lines. So the progress is uh, about 40%. We reach this progress from January up to now. With the, the if you see, with the people up to up to May, let's say up to middle of May, we won't be, we have only 14 people on site. We start to, to increase the, the demand power after after bad after the bad weather condition we, we have. So, but also in May we was not so lucky. In any case, today we are about 34. Okay. We're talking about manpower, uh, our contractor and subcontractors. Uh, like, uh, uh, like, say, during this week and the next week, we try to increase more uh, manpower. The, our, the, our target is to, to reach uh, uh, about 60 people on site. And uh, we are with this. Oh, this and this, you can explain so the right equipment now. we have. As far as equipment on site, we've got seven bulldozers, three motor graders, uh, two compactors, three skid steers, one excavator, one backhoe, and a tractor. So that's the equipment that we have on site. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
that immediately stopped the reclaim process. If we have to abide by that, it, and it won't be done in October, it'll be done next year. In fact, it may never be done. We cannot abide by that rule. The attorneys looked up, and that is actually an incorrect statement. They can run metal tracked equipment on gravel or dirt roads, <clears throat> but not on paved roads, obviously, never. But this is a, it's been done since the beginning of the project, but it's especially critical now because a lot of the dirt reclaims have been done for farmers. A lot of the radiuses have been removed. So how, how is the project supposed to get a dozer back for a washout at the far end of the project after a flood event? Because it's unable to access that because the radius is wrong. So we're asking relief on that rule uh, that you would ask that Purple Michael give us some leeway on that. And if we want to talk about that issue and then any other questions that you have. Yeah, also because uh, uh, like uh, Meg say, uh, we hope to have a uh, um, It would be very difficult to manage uh, the situation if we, if we are not authorized to move. We always, we always make maintenance, so when, where we damage it, the hard place. We Obviously, where the track vehicle will blade would fall immediately. That's not bad. Right. I know that uh, I spoke to Dave about, about that situation, and, and I also called Tanner and talked to him a little bit about it with the knowledge that these track vehicles are being followed by a blade. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that the damage is either non-existent or very minimal. I mean, I can't speak to it, I'm not an expert in that. But I do know they have to get this project done. And uh, I think the commission should, you know, take under, under advisement what, you know, been told, explained to us, and uh, really feel like that we need to work with them so they can so they expedite the problem, the project without damaging the roads that we will reassume. I, I, Dave, I mean, apparently or Blake, you, you, whenever you put a machine on the road like that, there will be somebody with authority there to have have this all covered and everything taken care of. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. I'd be a foreman myself. Okay. And, and Dave Prater with the and, with Kirk and Mike. Is and you would there. notify them to yeah. let them know that you're going to do it, so they they can watch and make sure that they wanted anything cleaned up, but that you could do it properly. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, so I would like to interject if I may. Yeah, okay. So I do have some pictures of this, of the damage and stuff on the roads, and the fact that the first off, it is against statute. As I mean, I would like to actually before we make a decision talk to our council on it because there is statute that says that track are not allowed to be on the roads. Um, and I, I did, I did, um, I would like to have our, our council review that because I did talk to Tanner and Tanner is pretty adamant against it and he said that if the county does approve this, then whatever comes out of it is on us. That Trevor Michael is not going to be responsible for anything that is not fixed as they say because it does go against statute. It is a statute that they abide by. And I will say that I do have a picture. This is a and, and this is a picture. Now first off what the track does is it actually crushes our rock to powder and I have had multiple calls of the dust up there is just unreal. Now this is after the track has gone by the, you know and if a, if a blade did follow that it didn't do a very good job. Um, and I don't know that they had blades following all the time. From some of the people that I spoke to that have seen these tracks go down the road, they didn't see the blade after them. I do know the last day or two, maybe, maybe the last day or so, am I right, Correct. that they started putting the blade behind them because of Kirk and Michael's insistence that that be done. No. So I'm very concerned about it. Um, and I, I will specifically say, because I have read several times the road maintenance agreement. And it is actually a responsibility on a regular basis to maintain the roads. It's not kind of like something you're doing out of the goodness of your heart. That is something that you have to do based on the agreement on a regular basis. I realize the weather sucks this year. I know that. But we're all in that same boat. Um, but it does concern me that, that I see this damage. And um, like I said, I think there's a little legal question that needs to be done as far as the um, 
statute is concerned before I would be willing to, to do that. Can you tell me what kind of machine run down that road? <laughs> and, uh, this one right here. Those yeah. are these are actually excavators. Excavator. 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 Okay. Okay. Just looking for stuff. Okay, yeah. And then there's two of them. There's one on the other page, but it's not a very good they're, picture of that one. That's a dozer. Yeah. yeah. That's a track Okay. Mm -hmm. So are you still watering those roads when they have to be working? Because, I mean, I've seen the water corrupt. As far as for dust control? Yeah. Yes, we are applying water in the areas that we're working. So the calls that I have had, and lots of people are saying that when one vehicle goes down the road after, after the dust, Walk is now powdered. Basically, mm -hmm. the dust is so bad that if you're if you're behind another vehicle, mm -hmm. you cannot see anything coming. That you're just mm -hmm. you're, you're just blind. That's all there is. To, the dust is that bad. And I've been having these calls, and because we've been in the process of hiring the engineer and so on and so forth, I haven't been making a, a deal or bringing it to their attention because we've been kind of busy about that. But I've been having the calls now for quite some time. Uh, got to be something about this dust. It's absolutely unsafe and terrible. So I know that for a long time, there's, I said, like that, several weeks ago, there's been a big dust problem up there, and no, nobody has been telling me that the water trucks have been taken care of it. Um, yeah, like I'm not said, saying that you aren't, yeah. but I'm just saying these people on these roads are not experiencing yeah. it. So if we're working in that, <coughs> we manage the dust in that area. Okay, so point. where you work, yes, but I just for me. every traffic and stuff, if it's on along those roads that there, there's no rock, <coughs> that the rock is crushed, you're not doing that. You're only doing it on the area. So that if, I'm, if I'm working a section of the road and we got traffic, we will suppress the dust in that area. Okay, in that area. So right now we're currently working off the Falcon between 3.30 and 3.40, so we are doing dust control. Okay, area. so from Alpha, from Alpha, Alpha where is it, Alpha? Alpha. Off the road all the way over to from Falcon. Falcon. Yes, ma'am. Any dust that they we're are just doing Falcon, is... just in that area. So wherever okay. we got cruisers, yes, yeah, doing okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and some of these calls <coughs> were from other roads, not yeah. where you're working. Yes. Do you know whether there's this has been taken care of after this or anything? That I'm not sure. Yeah, that was, um, just, yeah. that has it been done? Oh, yes. But I mean, going forward, if you're running one of those, the blade's going to be right behind. Yes. No, always, always we, we take care. Now I don't know in which moment was taken this uh, this picture. Yeah, the was, was taken just way one minute uh, later. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the truck was there. It's, it's easy you know, to to complain. But we take care absolutely also about the dust. Mm -hmm. And I will also say, I realize that it's a big task. I, I know that. But I also know for the county, um, over the months uh, that this project has been going, we have a list this long of roads that have been damaged that haven't been repaired yet. Um, and so, I and that's in my area, that's in my district, and I travel those roads, and I see those roads, and I deal with those people every day. Um, so I'm a little bit more keen to what's actually happening up there than maybe the other two gentlemen here. No, I so, travel, I travel them all the time too. Uh, well, it's probably not in my area all the way, but anyway, um, so, and I do listen to the people, and I do listen to our road grade operators. I find that our road grade operator has done a lot of repair on the roads to, to take care of our people, because the roads were huge potholes, or uh, water, you know, drainage, et cetera, and so I mean, the list goes on and on. And I know that we have spent a lot of money fixing some of those, am I correct on that? You'll, you'll verify that, yeah. It, it, it has been going on continually. So, not to say I don't appreciate the work that you're doing, but I'm just saying it's not all roses. So what you're saying is that our county maintainer has been on those roads? On our roads that have been damaged and have not been repaired as the road maintenance agreement specifies on a regular basis. Yes, David, it has. Been. Not on project roads. So I said on our county roads. On your county roads that I'm are talking not in about the project. Our okay. On our county roads, yes, that is true. But and the, the maintenance agreement says they have yes. to maintain those as well. Yes, and they are. And compared to another county road. I forgot to, to, to break down the dispatch the tunnel sent to us, but uh, if you check uh, the list of tunnel, 80% is finished. If I check it's the list of complete. what? Tanner's list. Tanner's list. Tanner's list. Oh, I have Tanner's list here. I yeah. didn't say it's 80%. It's so updated by them. No. Huh? Every time, every time, every time we receive one call from Tanner, mm -hmm. I don't say that one minute later, but the day later, 
the loan is complete, uh, the work is complete, so I don't know mm. which kind of complaint. Well, um, I don't know, but I have Tanner's latest list, and um, so I, I certainly would disagree with 80%. But I know you're working on uh, We are not measuring. You see, on the last two months, the weather was not gentle with us, so it's not possible also to perform sometimes what the people want. They need to understand that. And the, the situation there, I think, is very clear. We lost, in from January, we lost 36 working days. Mm -hmm. That's me. From January, it's almost two months without doing nothing with people there. Mm -hmm. So, and, I and we lose that. money. Huh? I understand that, but I'm just saying, you know, having said that, uh, we're facing the same thing in the county, with our county roads. Certain areas are rough because of the weather. So I got that, uh, you know. But then our road grade people are standing here telling us everything is just great and we run all these roads and we got all this stuff fixed. So that's kind of a different situation. My only comment is I wish the rest of the county had roads like that. <laughs> And, and some of the items on the list are actually culverts that were plugged in the project. Yes. And so the and project you know, I mean, we're having dust problems yeah. all over now because the rock is evaporated, whatever you want to call it. You know, from all the, the weather's caused a lot of that too. So, crash back here. Short comment. Well, I'm just going to say that the issue dealing with dust is the fact that they put an awful lot of rock out there. I assume I asked where are you getting the rock at? Did it come from Harvard? Yeah, it's been from a long, long, long is that long. <laughs> Same issue that we would deal with any of our roads um, as far as the dust. The only real difference is maybe going with a different rock supplier. It also behooves them to the fact is that they don't want to work bog that equipment any farther than they have to because it's very, very hard on equipment when you do that. You know, if they take a mile or two, that's they have to justify whether they use a truck or whatever else to walk that. So um, and I do appreciate the fact is that if our blade men are touching that, that's simply because they're trying to do the best they can, you know, because they've got people calling them on stuff <coughs> too. So it's a tough situation. It still comes down to the fact is that we're going to hold them to their agreement to get these roads fixed, whatever it takes for that point. So just a ton of information there. And, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because we have an issue. Uh, we were told that the, the roads had to have two inches of loose gravel on top. And the standard process for it's engineering process. is to process the road where they pack water, pack water, pack. The day, the day they went out and scraped all that loose rock, the complaints of dust just dust exploded started. because yeah. we had all this loose gravel on top. So I would hope there can be a discussion about future. I mean, from a landowner standpoint, I'd sure like to process roads. Well, I, I don't. I have no idea what that agreement was. I'm just saying, you know, for in my but, position. But that can be a future discussion. But I would like to follow like up. That said, would that would really help as a desk concern and the longevity of the road if they could be processed. We do have a copy of the road maintenance agreement. Right. We probably do. I just haven't read it. Okay. 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 We've got a lot to yeah. do. About. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, and, and I'm saying that's a lot of things we've addressed too. Is we've actually gone to in a lot of places a different rock source. And that was, a, that was a very big discussion at the start of the project that started with a linkage of quarry and had to quit using that quarry because of the softness of the rock. So and I think it went to Florence and Chapman. And then I will also say, and, and he's right, but I will also <coughs> say then the, the county commission has approved that we will buy nothing anymore other than KDOT approved rock. Correct. Now that doesn't apply to their project, so I don't know if that's what they're buying. They might just be buying still that soft rock. I don't know. All of our rock but is KDOT spent. All of this, yes, okay, okay, well, I know but what we did here in the county did not apply to you, so I didn't know what kind yep. you were buying. Yep, all of our specifications near the KDOT specs. Okay. All and of our water rock. So it comes off yes, the KDOT pile. Well, it's KDOT spec. So we call the quarry, we say we want an AB3 or an SS3, whatever. They look at the spec, they make the rock first. And then we do testing to confirm that it is meeting the specs. What would you expect, Blake, from now till the end? Would you expect now to the end of the project to have to road a machine down the road? How many? Once a day, twice a day, uh, ten times a day, ten miles? Half a dozen. Half a dozen a day? Yes, sir. I'd say six to ten times a day on average. So to load? Or we might have to just cross it. We might run up and down it for half a mile and then cross it and go across the country. 
I'd say yeah. Well, I understand across yeah. it. I, I'm just I'm asking going up and down the road. What we've seen in the pictures there. That's yeah, that's why I'm trying to get a hold of how going many forward, especially if we double our equipment in the next week or two. Yeah. And if, we, if the land hasn't been restored, the farmer's land hasn't been restored. They contract across the farmer's land. Yeah. But if the land's already been restored, we don't want to destroy the landowner's property and have to redo all that. Right. Too. So right. it's a it's a balance. Mm -hmm. Same way as you mentioned earlier, the distance does it justify hauling, or is it just you know half a mile? Well, short distances obviously it's easier to walk. But any anywhere they can, they're going to avoid going on the road. And you're going off of just the state specs that you can't go down the road, correct? Is that what your company's going on? You're right. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Our interpretation is a paid for it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I sure if they're bringing a the blade in behind. I mean, I, I don't think that they're crushing that much rock there. If they're just tracking down, I mean, if they're sitting pounding on it, I can understand that. But just to travel over it, I don't. And especially if you're using water in the area that you're working in, yep. yeah, that's going to leak you. And we are doing 36 hours of maintenance every week on county roads. Three days a week, all hours a day. We have one player to maintain the county roads. Brad's not going to be here today. No, he will. Okay, okay. He will. So fine. Okay. Well, I, I personally would want to wait to talk to Brad about it first because I'm not going to take any chances to going against statutes. Um, I did read it um, as far as the legal portion of it. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know. I'm certainly personally I'm not going to vote against statute. Well, sometimes, I get sometimes you have to step outside the box and get something done, and I'm more than sometimes willing to do you have that. to break the law. That's right. Well, that's, like <laughs> I said, get something done and, and get this, get it back, and I'm quite sure they will will stand behind their problem. If they're not doing what they say they're doing, I want you right here and yelling. Right. But uh, and they're to call me every time that they wrote one. And that's good. I, so you can jot it down. Yes. Yeah. And they're good about doing that. Yeah, they say they're yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think we need. They need to be able to expedite this, get it done. Like, like Dave said, we may never, never get it done otherwise. I think well, the other option would be to give us a waiver until you can do your legal research. But I mean, that that day it it brought the project to a halt because there was so much flood damage. We needed to get equipment moved, and that that waiver for that week really helped us out. So if, even if you could just give us a waiver until you can get a, a firm confirmation, that would be huge. Because I, I, we're confident you'll get the, the con legal confirmation. Um, but that, that we're going to schedule some time with Brad, and I mean, uh, more than make sure that we get a hold of him. If we talk to Brad, then make a decision. I don't know, I'm okay with that too. And I don't know whether that stopped you right now or what. Well, if we can, if, if we can have. To, Kirk and Michael allow us to continue in the meantime. <coughs> Be basically granting them a waiver for a day, a week, whatever. Until you get the. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that, but we'll get with Brad and get a definite on what his feelings are. So we... He is to be in, I guess. Okay. But then we're going to have to allow more time to talk about that, too. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice if he could, in my opinion, if he could research that and give us a, a definite answer for next week, next Monday. Okay, I can need some research. I'm not going to say it. Don't. From, and so, from okay. that regard, I, I would. Just a reminder: you don't have regular meeting next Monday. You have just That's budget right. session next Monday, so it's not it. Is that something we could do by conference call? Yeah. yeah I mean, you Brad had it set up a, on a on a some kind of a well it would have to be if you wanted to have discussion about that in a meeting you would have to have a properly called meeting you could do it by conference call but it would be in this room and that people would be allowed to come oh, and listen see, yeah, yeah. So. we can do that right off the get go next monday morning before we start what time we start that time yeah uh, but brad's usually not here that early in the morning no we but i think him. we wouldn't meet him then at that time well, if you have him if he, let you know the phone what he's with found us, out, or we could take care of it that way. I'd be in favor of that if it works out with Brad. Well, I mean, he'll be here later today. He yeah. might be able to answer it. Yeah. I don't know if he will. But in the meantime, rather than just having them stop, yeah, 
I would be in favor of giving them a one week waiver. I think you're going to get some rain, some more rain this week anyway. Yeah, if it uh, rains, it's stopped anyway. Yeah. 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 But I, I'd be okay with that. Give them a week waiver so we can get something done to, to bump it up for a week. Do yeah. you want to make a motion to that? Thing? Yeah, I'd make that motion that would allow Enel to go ahead for one week as long as you do what we've talked about. Contact them. Make sure the contact's made. Blade behind it. Make sure it looks good behind it and citizens are happy. And that's what and, we're at. And the dust control and, along with it. Yeah, dust control with that. That's what I motion. And I'll second that. Okay. We're moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm going to vote no until I get the law. I'm not going to give anybody permission to go against the law until I know. If I know, then, then I'll do it. But okay. otherwise, no. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You got you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. <laughs> You up there now, Dave, all the time? Yeah, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Dave. I'll, 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 I'll catch you someday when I'm up there. You call. Excellent. Go ahead, Bryce. I got the work. Where do I start? You said you have some department business to start with. Yeah, um, basically, um, as starting last week, uh, followed up on complaints or concerns that have been called in, followed up by both Tuesday and Thursday, was out on the road. Uh, Tuesday, I was around with Jesse the whole day, Thursday on my own, dealing with those concerns. Um, for the most part, by the end of last week, we have been over every bit of road we have to, to cover them. I'm not saying they're fantastic, we don't need work, work, but we had so many roads that were basically impassable, everything now is passable. Are pretty much right, Jesse. Almost. Almost. I mean, and like I said, the guys are working long hours uh, trying to get to that point. Everybody that I called said they were very happy that I called them back. They understood what we were going through. They said, We understand it's going to take some time. And they said, Well, just give us time. You know, we're, like I said, we're just getting the road passable. We've still, we're still dealing with the uh, damage from the flooding and stuff, documenting all that. Fact is, just got a call today from uh, Randy saying that. Um, we now have to get all of our federally secondary damage back to the state. So they in turn can send, to basically use that to the feds saying that, I think what he said, we had to come up with 700,000 in state level to basically justify going back to the federal highway to say that that federally secondary money. So obviously we've got that to work with too. So um, continuing to haul rock, you know, it's like anything else, we're trying to play catch up. If, if you guys would quit talking about this rain, <laughs> and, 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 you know, honestly, it's a little a little rain is actually helpful because you know yeah. we're talking about this. You know, we just talked about the dust up there. They're they're putting some some good rock down there, and it, it's like any other rock, it just wears out. And eventually, down the road, it will kind of take care of itself. But every time you bring out fresh rock, you deal with that. Um, we would deal with that issue too if we was able to put that kind of rock out there. But that's part of their agreement. That's what they need to be held to. Um, so anyway, we're continuing to work on that. Um, Continuing up on the uh, uh, signs, we're out there replacing the signs across the counties. Um, we'll look at the fact is on the bridge report that we got from last year. We've got some signs that uh, bridges, stuff like that, are rated. Find out we have a rated sign on one side, not the other. So we just talked this morning. We want to make that a a basically a high priority to get those done because it's illegal. Uh, you know the, the regulatory sign for posting those bridges. So get those taken care of. Had a meeting with the guys on Friday, um, had lunch, and we talked about numerous things, you know, the expectations. Showed them a lot of pictures. I mean, and, and what what I understand is as issues and stuff like that, if you travel these roads more like a constituent or whatever else, not really looking at anything else, there's a lot of things different than what you see when you're over the road every time. Uh, showed pictures, a lot of our grids have been washed out, but 
the reason they're washed out is because they've been washed out so many times we just put a skim coat over the top of them to get them open and then we go on to other issues. If we go back and properly build them back up the way they're supposed to be, you know, make them a little higher to where the water doesn't go across the road as much, you know, that's an issue. But we're, we're so reactionary when we come to that point. So taking pictures of that, there's some signs we have to work on. I mean, just you know, we've got brush to deal with. I just talked with Bud this morning about what we can do with brush. If we go back to spray it or mow it or whatever the case may be, um, got to look at that aspect. Um, and Jess and I have talked a little bit about uh, the budget or what we're going to, what's in the budget, what we need to go to. Talk to the guys about possible new equipment, stuff like that. I guess I, based on what I heard, everybody liked the meeting. You know, it was good to get everybody together and kind of on the same page. You know, as you well as anything else, we've got you know, issues to take, take you know, to get fixed or whatever else, and um, that's starting on the list. For, I mean, that um, one thing I did have an issue with is not an issue, but a question about is um, based on the the professional engineering experience, whatever else. Typically, they've allowed us to make changes. I say that they, as in the legal department, states, stuff like that. Um, if we use good engineering judgment, we're allowed to make changes to these things. Now, I guess the question that I'm asking is if I have any legal issues as to what the states have ruled in the past or whatever else, should I go to Brad or should I go through um, Joel, excuse me, on those or should I come back with you and then you can determine where, I mean, mainly just find the history of things like that. So I don't know if you had any ideas as to how that routine would or what the legalities of that, I mean, having two quote, you know, counselor, attorneys, whatever. The county attorney is, a, is just the prosecutor. Okay. So okay. any, um, any. Um, oh, that stuff goes to Brad. Yeah, okay. it's Brad's the one who sure. addresses those things okay. for the department. Be and, be and like I said, either way, I just didn't know. But And it's mainly, like I said, it's, it's the issue of, in the past, they've always said that you know, as long as it's you use that good engineering judgment, you're okay. But I just want to make sure. One of the issues is like signs. You know, if they, if we say we're going to follow up the MUTCD, then you know stuff like that. So um, obviously, there's a lot of issues, and I don't want to get the county ad hoc either way on stuff like that. So um, other than that, continuing to work the roads and stuff like that, but. Um, anything else we're, we're working on. Obviously, once we get past the uh, the emergency declaration and all that documentation, I mean, we're still going through all that, trying to put dollars and cents to it, um, turn that over to Randy. Like I said, the FAS is mainly going to be like the count, the paved county roads. Most of those will be the, the federally secondary, as you may or may not know. So um, typically, it takes high dollar, some high dollar operations to fix those. Um, we're also talking about to get started on the blade patching now too, since we're now hopefully out of this rain. We keep talking about that, getting warmer, get warmer temperatures. But I mean, we've got an awful lot of blade patching to be completed from winter time and last fall, so we can get on that too. So it doesn't seem like we're short of work to do, you know. So, um, but anyway, you also have chip seal coming up. Yep, have you yep. been able to review those roads well, that are on the schedule? That not yet, but the other issue is some of those that be chip deals have to have blade patching. Right. We have to have the blade patching done for several weeks to a month ahead of time to make sure that's all you know mellowed out and get rid of all the distills and stuff like that. So yeah, that's something else we need to look at. Like I said, the last week we've just been trying to get the, the roads open. So with that being said, Bryce, uh, I see, as I traveled south this weekend, I see the golden weed is golden. Uh -huh. I mean, it's definitely turning. That means that within a week or so that these boys are going to be out here wanting their... And you've talked about you just got over the roads, but uh, some of those ones that's way back there that one guy's got a field to get to, just make sure your operators are... I'm, I'm just hoping, like I told Jesse before you was on, is just make sure that, you know, they don't... We need to get them open to where they can't get to them. That's all we're asking. Sure. Totally understand. We've, we've actually had several people that say, hey, within a couple of weeks, you know, we're going to be in there. Yeah. We love that, you know. And, you know, our guys, like I said, that's the reason why, you know, some of these roads have had, you know, ruts a foot deep. You know, what we're doing is fill those ruts in yeah. just to get them across. Yeah. But yeah, we totally understand. And, I mean, that's that's what I told the guys is those, the, the, the blade men are the eyes, the ears, and the mouths of Marion County Road Department. If they see something, hear something, whatever the case may be, 
you know, follow up with us. That's that's what we're here for. But yeah, we've got we've got some areas where we've got our springs are wide open right now, and when you typically don't have springs, it's not a problem. When a spring opens up, it just creates a mess of everything. So yeah, um, and like I said, that's one of the things is we're, we're being extremely responsive to the fact is that somebody calls in within a day or two, we're out there checking it out and. And what I found out was, uh, like Thursday, I was out driving around. Most of the issues had been addressed already. It's just that, you know, like I said, those guys are just uh, going to get those fixed. So yeah, and it's not any different whether it's a wheat harvest, whether it's any other harvest, or any other access for fertilizer, or whatever else. You know, you got to get those. The co-ops out spraying a lot too. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much year-round, yep. especially the size of those sprayers and yep. how high they sit. Yep. yep. <laughs> and you know, we, that was the other thing is we talked about you know overhanging trees and stuff like that. You know, that's all an issue. That's going to be winter work that uh, we get in there and get that done. But uh, it's all on a. Like I said, I just drive around just sheets after sheets after sheets of stuff that, that I see need to be done and we can put it in the process. But. Uh, Again, like I said, everybody I've talked to, it's been, we realize you've got a big, big, you know, and they, most of them said, man, we, you know, we appreciate you calling us back. And they said, well, that's, that's what I'm here for. That's what we're supposed to be responsive to. So, but, I understand. And, you know, like I said, if, if anybody has any other concerns, whatever else, they've been calling in. And, we well, just get them to call in and let you know there's a problem. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, like I said, the one lady called, we only had one call in last week at, uh, he has an oil well down there he was trying to get to well again it's a spring open wide up right across the road and and so he know not only called in but the guy a guy called in the next day talking about the same situation getting in for weed harvest i said i know exactly where you're at here's the problem here's our so what we're going to try to do and he goes okay you know i mean it's one of those things to where you know they, they know and i said you know look at all the miles we have across this county we're trying to get covered and it's just Jess and I saw last week up north. You know, we've got some issues that on, on dirt roads that it's like, wow, we haven't even you know, got to yet. So, and and it's not any one in particular's problem. It's just countywide. You know, all this weather problem this year. Well, it's the weather, but it's you know, like I said, the, the what, all the stuff here. Yeah, and all the snow days, yeah. rain days, and yeah. stuff that they've got. And so you keep talking about it, so you're going to jinx us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I don't know if Murphy's Law says you talk about it, it doesn't happen, but if you don't That's talk about it, right. I don't right. Regardless, listen whatever. To, listen to the weather. Yeah. 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 Regardless, whatever happens, we have to deal with it, you know, whatever the case may be. So, but we're going to stay on it. So, I guess I didn't have anything else other than, you know, we're proceeding with that. Uh, obviously, going to pick up the budget, uh, start talking about that, too. So, and obviously, you know, talk about the chip sealed roads and stuff like that as we're going through the best time of the year or you know to the warmest time of year to do that yeah so. i just kind of wondered what what your philosophy might be on chip seal because i know that we have roads that are in enough their quality is is good enough that we need to keep them up with the chip seal but the more articles i read about chip seal and how little good they actually do i mean structurally they do very little one thing they do is they seal up the road they seal up, and the only reason why you really put a chip seal down is you want to seal up the road, but you can't leave it slick. You put down enough oil to put down rock on top of it for, for skid resistance and traction. Other than that, I mean, even though you keep doing that and everything else, it, it doesn't really affect the structure a lot. But it's a necessary evil when you get good roads that you want to try to keep them up to. Yeah, so. because I know of, of one road last year we finally decided it wasn't worth the effort. Sure. And like I said, it's it's a you you put all that stuff on there and and uh, yeah I mean it'd be great to say hey we got twenty million dollars sitting around let's go pave all these roads with it. even a two inch overlay would make wonders but we just can't afford that to deal with it so but oh um, I guess there is one more thing I guess Jesse said it's been kind of an issue for the what is the road down there coming off of fifty sure. Coming off of 50 there at the county line, what was that that's closed? Limestone. Oh, yes. Limestone, Limestone coming north. off of Highway 50. Yeah. I guess there's been issues about keeping it closed, open it back up. I don't know if you guys have solved that. I guess I don't really care about the fact is we've got type 3 barricades sitting down there that are basically meant for a temporary situation. If we want to permanently close it, we can go with more of a permanent closure without turning back, whatever the case may be. But you know, we need to figure that out because it, it's it's actually a liability for us to have type three barricades down there if we're not going to maintain it. 
people still driving by, but they, you know, and maybe there's farm access down there. I don't know. I haven't been down there, but I just drive by. So. Take a look. Drive down through. Okay. Take a look at it. But kind of like for maybe a, rec a recommendation for me then. I mean, I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. And that was passed by the board to open, um, and then it just went to the Okay, side. and that's. But um, yeah. then there was also issues with that farmer's field mm -hmm. on the east side, I think. Okay. If I remember, is what was washing that road out. Okay. Well, I and know NRCS was talking to him. Okay. But then I. I well, I'll, I'll go check it out, and look at it, and then obviously if it's an issue of uh, field washing out the road, maybe there is deals ways we can deal with that to keep the road open, whether it's an NRCS or something we can do or or whatever. Well, but like I said, just curious. The problem is the maintenance on it. I mean, it's, people fall off Highway 50 right there and just go. It goes nowhere. I mean, the road goes nowhere. Uh, that's the problem, and it was also passed by the board to close it. And we were well, trying to be, we were trying to be nice yeah. to the person to yeah. come and work with us, and that person's more or less didn't. And here, just lately, within the last six months, here we find out roads going down on a road, the rocks going down on a road that we didn't even know what was happening. Oh. And so the person, we, he just will not work with us. If, yeah. if the person would work with us, we could give him a good road. Okay. But that well, seems to be a problem. Well, like I said, that's just what I was asking because, I mean, we've got barricades sitting out there and we can use the barricades because obviously we were so short of barricades um, for this yeah. you know, event. So. <laughs> okay, we need to move on to the job description. Jesse? Jesse, if you want to come up here to the table too, that'd be great. Do you want to discuss this in open or we need to have a technical session? No, I think we have to do it in open session. You know, if you're talking specifically about particular personnel and how it relates to them, we can do that in a close Okay, then you probably need to move, move that direction. Are we not just actually going to do the job description? Are we going to compare different uh, things before we actually get into the person? If you choose to do it that way, yeah, because it's if you can do that. If it's just generic as to the job description itself, then we wouldn't go in. But if it's how it applies, and if you want a specific input as to well, this is how I do it, and that kind of thing, then you can do that open workshop. I I viewed all the, and I'm asking you a question. I viewed all the different job descriptions that were uh, provided to us that dealt with here, like the county engineer, mm -hmm. how that compared then to the road supervisor. And then we also had, or I had, because I had both of these, the bridge culvert supervisor and the road bridge superintendent, uh, different things like that. So I compared them, you know, yeah. where they overlap and things like that. So I pretty much have adjusted job descriptions, no names, because all these people, all these jobs, all of them at one time had a name that they don't today. So it's, it's whatever, but, um, if we're just going to stick with job description, you say we can go on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's just the description itself. That's generic and open. Okay. So obviously that's always readily available to the public. So I don't know, did you guys do your comparisons? Yeah. I, I did mine. And here's what I came up with. And I know I'm, I'm scratched here, but all my yellow, I'm looking here at the county engineer job that we just went through, the description that we just made for the county engineer, and then the road and bridge superintendent position. Um, all my yellow is where same, 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 exactly the same job, okay? So if you take those two job descriptions and you go as to what does not cross on the road and bridge superintendent position, there's only five um, work assignments, shall we say, that apply to that that are not on the engineer job. Uh, in recipient of that, when you go into the engineer job, there's actually nine uh, job responsibilities that are added to the engineers that are not on the way to bridge. So, having said that, and then I also compared the road supervisor and the bridge culvert supervisor. And I know Randy had a concern yes, over about how one person or how we have it set up now, cannot go over the whole county and see all these roads and report back because there's just many roads. So as I was going through those two descriptions, um, and I'll tie this up right here, is uh, again, the same thing. All my stuff in yellow is a duplication, back and forth. 
uh, and the ones in blue are either not on the one or the other. And I will also say that they're pretty basic um, either way. So what my suggestion was, or what I'm thinking as I'm looking at this, so you have the county engineer. Personally, I think we should just do away then with the position of the road and bridge superintendent because they're just the same, same, same. So do away with the, the road and bridge superintendent. And then if you take like your road supervisor and your bridge culvert supervisor, if you make that all one, if you make it a bridge, I'm sorry, a road bridge culvert supervisor, but maybe have a, a road bridge culvert supervisor north and a road bridge culvert supervisor south, two people divide the county in half. That way that particular person on the north side will be really familiar with those roads because that's the only ones he travels in the same way as the one on the south. The description will be the same. We used to have, this is two jobs that we actually had, but again, this man was responsible for the whole county and so was this man and there was a failure there. Well, I don't want to say a failure, but a, a lot of work. So if we go ahead and combine that into what, because you can't tell, as I drive down the roads, not only am I looking at the roads, but if I see a smashed culvert, or if I'm at a bridge, I can look at that too as I'm on that road. So why do I need to have two or three different people traveling that same road? So that's just a suggestion that I have to where we would have the engineer and then we would have two people here that would, then the three of them would, whether they take pictures or what, I'm just saying that way we would have all those aspects covered. <coughs> it would be my, my suggestion from based on how I compared. Can I, can I offer some comment to that? Mm -hmm. Um, part of the issue with that, I totally understand what you want to say, is now putting two people in charge of half the county is, now I basically split up the resources I have. And the fact is, trucks. Is I now have to figure out where the trucks are going on a day-by-day -day basis, and now those two need to communicate together to get the trucks going somewhere, as well as the, uh, the Cobra crew. My thought was the road supervisor, um, in this case we were looking at Jesse, would be in charge of the entire county as far as the roads. He in turn, I mean that's basically all he's doing is running those roads. Can he get to them in all one day? No. I mean, but he can make rounds hopefully twice a week, driving up and down the roads and then getting back with, with me or whatever else so that we can then plan we talked about this morning, I'd like to meet like Thursday afternoon with Jesse and the sign guys and the shop guy to discuss the plans for the next week. To come in to where now I know, okay, the, the culvert crew is going to go here, the blade guys are still working on the road, but we're going to need, we're going to try to work on rock and this and this and this area. Again, we talked about it, we feel that that's one of the things that Jesse is very, very good at. He knows these roads, he's driven up and down them. He just hasn't had the time to be able to put forth that effort. That's what I'm here for is to relieve a lot of that other stuff, but still work with them to get that position, still leaving, you know, the other positions the way they are for now. You know, if we need to see something down the road, we can do that. Um, the other thing that I guess brings up the question is, is um, you're calling these positions supervisors. By nature of the beast, a supervisor supervises. In the, in the project description, or in my position description, I'm supervising everybody. So that the issue with that is I don't have a problem uh, supervising all those people, but if Jesse, as the road supervisor or whatever else, is out and about and sees something going on, I feel that as that position, he should have some sort of, uh, if you want to say disciplinary um, authority, and the fact is this needs to be addressed. Now, the problem, or I mean, I like that idea is because he's working with these guys day by day, truck drivers, whatever else. If it becomes an issue to where it goes whatever else, I'm there also to discuss those issues. The problem is, is he, if he's out and about and trying to get this stuff taken care of, the guy says, well, I'm not talking to you, I'm just going to, to Bryce. Well, it defeats the purpose of having him out there trying to work with them. I don't foresee that happening, but that's an issue, and it's a matter of respect going both ways. So again, if you want to use the term supervisor, we've got the same thing with the shop, you know, the shop form, you know, any of those things out there, typically those positions involve some, and if you follow the position descriptions, it talks about directly or indirectly supervising the people below them. So, I mean, I think that's kind of an issue that if you want to 
address those issues. But um, like again, I understand the issue is is you want to get people to every part of this county, plain and simple, blade man, covert man, sign man, whatever it is. And I think just having the one person that's going around and making sure, you know, he may be going to areas where the blade men are right now, but he's doing that for a reason because he's checking on this or this or this so that he can go back to the blade man and say, hey, we need to go over here and get this. Again, no one, including myself, can get to every one of these rows on a daily, I mean, honestly, between everything else that has to be going on probably a weekly basis. But I think if I have one person to go to that can make sure that's getting done, then um, that's what I would rather have. Now, if it gets to the point to where Jesse or I mean, whoever else is in that position um, isn't getting that done, then we can go to you know, plan B or C, whatever it is. But I guess I'd rather have one person kind of to go to for those issues as compared to breaking things up because then I start breaking up trucks and, and everything else. It's gonna be bad enough the way it is just trying to, I mean, to coordinate the issue of excuse me, getting those rock trucks going to one spot at one time, you know, whatever else, as compared to saying, oh, I need it worse than you, because then that, I get involved and say, okay, you know, it's one of those things. But again, it, that's, it's up to you guys, whatever you want to do. I'm just getting my input from what I've seen, you know. Um, what we're trying to do is get, get those guys, you know, whether it's the culvert, the signs, the blades, whatever else, to every corner of the county to get those taken care of. Plain and simple, whatever it takes to get that, then that's what we need to do. Well, I I agree that if if we had if we had all the resources that we wanted in an ideal world to be able to kind of split the county up would be a good thing. But I also also agree with you that you need to be able to supervise, coordinate all that with one person. <laughs> now if we're talking about a superintendent instead of a supervisor. I don't care what to me I don't care what that title is that that you know I I really feel like that you know the buck, the buck needs to stop here or here well honestly rather than rather than than we've got several people saying I need the resources today when the resources are down here trying to finish sure. something or start and, it something and honestly the buck stops with me you hired me to do this position this is my input to you is I would like to leave that position you know, in charge of that, and we can revisit down the road. Again, it comes down to me as if it's not getting done, it's now my responsibility to take to figure out what it's going to take. You know, I, again, you know, a lot of these the people I called last week, I was out and about all day, and I called them back after five o'clock, and they were just amazed. And I said, you know, I'm here to do my job, plain and simple. Um, like I said, with my experience and stuff like that, it's it's you know, I, I mean, and it, trust me, I understand. You know, start splitting the county and everything else, but again. That puts now two position, two people that I have to go to that we have to talk about to split those. What I'm saying is I think we can do it the way it is now, get those issues resolved as they are, and if they're not, then down the road, that's when we, you know, it may be a couple months. I, mean, I told the guys Friday, I said, right now, we're trying to figure all that stuff out. There, and the other thing is, they would be nice. The fact is, if, if they had one person, or you know, whether it's the road supervisor, whatever we call them, or myself, to go to. Um, you know, again, I want to be involved in the day-to-day -day stuff, but there's a lot of other things that I need to be doing. These guys on the road, that's where they need to be. Whether it's the road guys, the corporate guys, whatever else. So, so we foresee the road supervisor, superintendent, slash whatever we have to call it, would would also take care of the bridge and culvert. Right? Yes. And, and, and with that being that, again, he's driving up down the road, he's looking for signs, he's looking for bridges, he's looking for road problems, whatever the case may be. He in turn calls me back, and like I said, that was what we talked about was a Thursday or Friday meeting to where, okay, next week, this is what we're going to work on. The culvert crew is going to go here, 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 and obviously the road guys are going to you know, continue to do whatever else, but as part of their daily report, we want them to document the issues that may be or whatever else and that, that comes back to us. We in turn put that on an agenda for next week and then we address it. So that, and the other thing is not only putting on a schedule but following through with it. Okay, was it done? Was it done correctly? If not, why not? Again, that comes back to me to make sure that, that we follow through with that. And, and 
going through these job descriptions, uh, it would appear to me that a good job description for the supervisor slash superintendent would involve what we already have as a road superintendent, a supervisor, and a bridge and culvert supervisor. Kind of a combination of those two things. Yeah. I don't know if, what you think, Randy and Diane. But. Well, I, Bryce, I'm, I'm willing to try what, it, what you think works. Uh, and, and as you just said, if you see, and I, I don't think you've got your feet wet yet. You have I stepped in a couple mud holes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there's going to be a lot of things happen, and you'll see what oh, needs sure. to be done. So sure. I already so, have. Right, right. And so you you can go down there and look at probably just the notes that's been left for the last month, probably, and see what's going on. But, but anyway, I, I'm wanting to follow what you'd like to do and, and make sure that we, if you think that that one person Jesse to to answer to some of that if that helps things flow easy that's all I'm after is to flow easy plus what you said too is see every corner of the county mm -hmm. I mean if we got to make our presence or we're not going to accomplish it sure and so one of the other things that we've looked at is the stars program that keeps track of all of all this information is they actually have some additionals that we could purchase that basically would show the work that's been done on a map now we could pull it up on a daily, weekly, monthly basis and this is where we've covered in the county. We can all do also do the same thing by manually drawing it on a map. So we can keep track of where these guys are. And I, I told these guys that's something that we're going to look at is we need to be accountable where you guys have been working and what you've done. Plain and simple. Now again, it's up to you guys, but I mean, honestly, we could put together that and you know, if you want to deal with these other positions, you know, foreman, whatever else, if it says directly, indirectly, supervised, I mean, it, it's a matter of the, techni the uh, technical terms. But I really think the other thing is, you know, obviously Jesse's a tremendous asset. He's been over this county time and time and time again. It's just a matter of making sure that we get, now that we're over the county, that we're getting that stuff done. And again, that's something I work with him as well as the other guys. If it doesn't get done, we go to plan B. And it's putting a lot of pressure on him, but ultimately, again, it's got to be me that has to answer to you guys as to what's going on. So I think I think you know what I just said, and I feel that way. Except I do I do want what I what I've seen is just seeing people run past one another and, and want to accomplish things. I understand. I understand. It's it's kind of ironic you talking about running past things. I had one guy called up and said, "Yeah, he drove right across the rock and went to my to my dirt road, and then he started blading." I said, well, I'm guessing he saw there was rock on the road that was better than where he was going, and so he went up to the dirt road and, and fixed it. Yeah. He said, I appreciate that, but you know, it's it's that's one of the things is we're trying to get over every road. So we're not going to make everybody. Happy. Well, no, but I mean, we again, we have to be we have to be accountable that if we've got call, we we address it and as yeah. we can. So, I mean, Diana, is that? Does that seem good with you? I mean, I'm going to let it up to you. I mean, okay. I was, we had that in our packet, and I, so I, yep. I did my work. Sure, sure. And, and so I presented it to you, but that's what I thought, but you're, yeah. the, you're the man in charge. So well, I'm gonna and, and honestly, I, I, had, I had looked at that too, and I'd kind of gone through, but then one of the things I wanted to address was, you know, the issue of the supervisor or whatever else. But if it's okay with you, I mean, I'll kind of get some ideas together and maybe get them back to you. Maybe you guys could spend some more time with the two, but. Six months from now. Whatever the case, I mean, and, and to be honest with you, if it takes if it takes uh, longer, shorter than that, you know, I mean, obviously you're going to know if it's not working because you're going to be getting the same comments that you had before. And if you start getting less and less comments, it's it's going to be good. Thing. Yeah. So. so Bryce, what are you suggesting then the title be? At this point in time, I mean, I don't know, and and I don't know. Brad maybe could answer. Is there a, is there a legal determination calling somebody a supervisor? Not in terms of these job descriptions. There okay. are in certain circumstances for uh, numbers that they supervise, and that okay. kind of thing for certain issues um, in terms of exempt employees. That sort of thing won't be a concern for us. Okay. okay. I think it's more nomenclature. Right. Um, and I'll keep these templates too, because what I did, what I did when we first started this was. Um, take the road and bridge superintendent, right. pretty much what Bryce is suggesting, and took what was there and either found it on what you guys have done as the, the template, I left it alone, of the county engineer, because that's just been done, um, 
or moved it to road supervisor and change titles at all. And the, the reason I stopped and didn't s distribute any of those even to Jesse or Bryce is there's overlap. Yes. There's a number of these where it's going to be both of them because something as simple as um, you know supervision of manpower, which is what you were addressing, Jesse's going to supervise certain people in terms of, of a project on scene. Bryce is going to oversee the whole process. So I stopped uh, at that point. But I, what I did was go through all of those and outline what I had done so they're available. But I was went through less permutations than you did. I just took what was wrote and, and bridge superintendent and it either landed on the canning engineer's job description or on road supervisor. Um, and then some of them were on both. It depends. It's obvious that it's going to be that way. Well, in, Je in Jesse's best interest, I'd like to, you know, nail down that. And that's it. I, I, that's the one thing I would say is make sure that they're, uh, you know, comfortable and clear as to what's being done and what the job description is so you know you're fulfilling it. Sure. Well, and, and I got to say, honestly, you know, Jess and I have worked fantastic in the last week and everything else. Just driving around, you know, say, hey, Jesse, I see this. He goes, you know, I never thought about that. You know, it's just I've offered him an awful lot of insight, too. He's in turn come back and said, well, this is what we've done in the past. So we've got a great working relationship now and we continue we hope to continue that so absolutely and like i said want. yeah and like i said if if it's not working out you guys are going to know about it and, and i'm going to you know have to deal with that and, and i i don't want that i want things to go to go up from here good. so yes good yes and i'm going to throw as much as i can on him and see if he sinks or swims no, I'm just kidding. He'll, he'll, he'll swim. swim. He'll swim. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, he he knows just as well as anybody else the amount of work that's out there, you know. And it didn't help the fact is we had all this work to do. Now we got to turn around and spend several hundred thousand dollars and all the documentation to get reimbursed for it. So. <clears throat> I think that was some of the complaints here that it seemed that the roads weren't fixed. Well, they didn't know we had to send away. Yeah. Wait well, I, some of the guys said I can't even get down with my tractor. Yeah. Well, if you can't get down a tractor, we're not going to go out there and blade it and. And obviously we had to wait for the roads to dry out because the muddy, muddy road is not a good time to be played. So, but like I said, everybody I talked to was, was nothing but supportive, saying, hey, we realize you got a mess, we got the time. You know, we also have to realize over the next yeah. next year we're still going to be waiting on this emergency money. Oh, yeah. Well, we hope not, but I mean, uh, you, you understand that. Yeah, I understand, we understand the government. Well, and I think a lot of that has to fact is whether it's going to stay at the state level or whether it's going to go to the, the federal FEMA level. You know, at this point in time, we don't know, but I think all things considered, what we've had here is only going to be reinforced by what they're seeing downstream on the Mississippi. You know, I mean, there's a possibility that who knows what happens with New Orleans. It may be underwater again, too, all this water gets down there. So. So, so on a different note, yes. uh, still the same almost. We have two interims right now. Are they ready to go back to their position? You don't need yes. them now anymore, right? Yeah. So we can go ahead and put them back yeah. into their uh, positions before that, and take the yeah, salary no from back where they, they right. were salary-wise? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, but, yeah, and again, if there's ever anything that comes up, I mean, obviously, you, you texted me yesterday with an issue. I'm more than happy to answer those. You send me a message, whatever else, whether it's on during the week, weekend. I mean, you know, I I realize it's a salary position. I realized when I took this job what it was gonna take and I'm I'm ready to take it. So that's for set right now. Well, I, that's that's what that's my recommendation. Okay. Okay. So my, minus the yes. So we just, the boards wish to, and I take it prices to leave them alone just the way they are for the moment and then let it leave it pending. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we can work on them together. Yeah. Oh, um, one more thing is um, we got a permit from uh, the Rural Water District number four. Um, I would like to take an active role in this to make sure we go out and check this out ahead of time, take pictures, whatever else. So I will check this out and get back to you next week. Uh, for a line? Yes. Yeah. Out, Under the road? Yeah. That's four miles south and two miles east of, of Hillsboro. Okay. But it's like it's like with uh, the road agreement or whatever else, I'd like to make sure that we, we do our due diligence ahead and afterwards. So. Okay. Appreciate it, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. Okay. So do you need to put that on the agenda or do you do that? Well, I'm just thinking about how to do that. Um, if you want to start off, we've already started scheduling the department head presentations for budget, but if you wanted to do an administrative and road bridge session at the beginning with regular business and then go into your budget work session after that, 
for next Monday because you don't have a regular meeting next Monday. You do. You talking about the first permit? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh no, I was talking about the interims. You're talking about you're talking about what you talking about the permit. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about scheduling time on the agenda to um, take care of that permit, and then that question you had about the road maintenance agreement. No, that's not what I was talking about. But that's what you were talking about. That's okay. okay. Well, like I said, just let me know where you're aware. Well, we can um, as far as the interims, that's as simple as a salary sheet, which can be yeah. done any okay, time, so and it doesn't have to be done in advance. Okay, so, yeah. so that's why yeah, I that's, asked if you were going to go ahead and get that. Well yes, to move the yes of course. Back. Okay. That's just and an administrative effective. matter. Um, that would be effective, what, immediately? Yeah, I would yeah, say probably when. Yeah, he said immediately that would be fine. I mean, technically speaking, if I started last week, then that would be the date. But right, what, that's whatever what works out personnel. But we okay. need to address that road maintenance agreement because okay. we, we uh, during our meeting with the uh, uh, Diamond Biscuit uh, with NL, we granted them a one week waiver okay. on allowing them to move their track of vehicles on the road as long as they maintained right behind them. Okay. okay. Directly behind them. <coughs> with dust, with, with also with dust control, maintainer and dust control. And so now you know, Herb and Michael is uh, the people that we hired to do that, and uh, Dan Tanner was very concerned that that was not allowed by statute to run those tracks on the roads. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's what I thought. It is, but their discussion is they would never get done what they needed to do so, if we weren't. So is that a reason to break that statute law? <laughs> yeah. I think we need to talk to them and see what our alternatives are. Because mm -hmm. I see the point. I mean, we're yeah. to and Tanner had made it very clear to me that if the county does choose to go ahead and grant that position, that they, it's on us 100%. Yeah. Because if anybody contacts the state or anything with that, that we could, we have a lot to lose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You understand? I think so. I think you yeah. do, don't you? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> if I don't, I'll ask. Okay, okay uh, Deidre, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I would like to go into the executive session for employee performance. And if we could include Brad and also Tina, that would be great. Okay, the employee performance, you said? How long do you need? Ten minutes. Okay. I'll move recess into executive session in order to discuss uh, item uh, item one personnel matters and not elected personnel in order to discuss employee performance. So with the commission, Brad, Tina, and Deidre. Do I get to go too? Until. Uh, well, if Tina gets to go. I'll get to go too. <laughs> Until. 11.55, and we'll open the room back into open session. This, this is long. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So where's the... the that every all the different things. Various things. So, I'll try it again. One of the... Get my facts and figures. Okay, next on the agenda is the uh, Ramona City 4th of July request. Yes. Do you have a chair, sir? <coughs> it's come to our attention in that. Oh, would you state your name? Oh, I'm sorry. George Thiel. T-H-I-E-L. Okay. Um, in Ramona, it's come to our attention that the county's been willing to help out with some of the fireworks displays that are done. And we came to ask if you could really help out with ours as well. As well as we're using this to promote the town. And through the hotel tax, we want to know if we would be eligible for anything on that for promoting the town as well. And I do know that that's right. We, we do give money to, um, I think we give money to, is it Peabody that yep. does it? It's Lawrence. Um, that does that okay in the, no but in the past we have there have been requests made for transient guest funds 
from, I believe, Lincoln Bell Oktoberfest and um, the Labor Day okay. celebration for Florence. Okay, oh, Labor Day, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so I knew we were doing it for some people for different uh, activities and things like that. And so, um, and I know I've been to this uh, Fourth of July that they put on, but I've also been to uh, the Oktoberfest in Lincolnville, and these little towns are they're all trying hard to promote their town. And that's what these funds are for. And that's what I, I think. Uh, I think surely we should recognize their efforts and um, the system wherever we can to help them. We're coming a long way in the moment, and a mm -hmm. lot of it has come from the help of the county. I mean, it truly has. Um, I'm going to tell you, when I moved in Ramona, what I was told was, make sure you own a gun because we probably won't get out of here. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've seen instances where people have been having the doors kicked in and it's eight hours before we saw a deputy. To, we have deputies at town continuously now. Um, we're, we're seeing the, the county road departments come through and helping us with, with different things and showing us things we need to do. And if it wasn't for the county helping us, we wouldn't be getting the positions we are now. Um, and, you know, first off, I'd like to thank y'all for that. I really would. And I tell you, they, they, they were real, well, I tell you, their board is out there manually working, mowing, cleaning up, picking up, whatever, to make the effort to bring Ramona up. And they really made a lot of improvements and changes with what they can do. So, um, do you have any idea how much you're asking for, or? What's your request? We, we'd like to see if we could get 500 on the fireworks and between 500 and 1,000 on the, on the other for promoting the town because we use it not just for this event but for other things that we can push forward with. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get some of the, where the co-op has just removed everything. Um, we're trying to get somebody to come in on that and take that over. What have we been donating to Florence and what was the other one? Uh, Lincoln 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 typically what we have done in the past is um, if like one of the little festivals was bringing in a performer we would pay for the performer it's usually around 300 350 dollars I think we've put 150 to 250 towards the Labor Day um, I'd have to look back because I don't have that all memorized so it wasn't a set amount well and one thing that we've always um, that has had been provided was their documentation so if we are providing money towards a specific project like a marketing project mm -hmm. then in the past we would always have an invoice or something showing that it was paid like that you actually used it to market like for an advertisement or a brochure or something um, or if there's you know if it's for an event that's a little bit easier because we know the event is taking place so so he's asking two things so right now that the event is, is this one right here yeah okay so, would you need more than this? You wouldn't need more than this. You, you know they do that, right? So, we wouldn't have to provide anything other than this for the event. I wouldn't think so, but I think that you also need to, um, as I said when we were talking about transient guest tax funds the last time, there needs to be some sort of a procedure for people to apply for them and for you all to have a set way to know that it's, it's fair, you know. And so. that's, that's good. And I, I did some work on that myself, on that transient guest tax uh, that we did. And actually, if you read that statute, there is a provision in there uh, for where there should be um, a convention and tourism committee. Well, there can be. Yes. And but so there doesn't I was have to be. That, but when you say that we need, and, I, and we had discussed that, we do need to come up with a fair way mm -hmm. to put it throughout the county. So when I was reading through the statute and that offered that, uh, way I thought well that's really really a good way to have maybe a, a board mm -hmm. and they would be appointed similar to planning and zoning uh, and have them have all the monies and stuff go through that board uh, <coughs> you know put out evenly throughout the, the community I just read that in the actual um, that statute 12-1695 uh, where it talks about the terms of the committee and so on to expend that transit money and I just think that's kind of a fair way to go. I was surprised I fell on it. So since you talked about that, I just thought I'd bring that up. So you you can appoint a board. I mm -hmm. think it says it has to be at least nine or ten members, yes. if I remember right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but does. in absence of having a board appointed, mm -hmm. then those requests come here. So mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm happy to provide a list of what you've done in the past and 
you know. That would be a fairly a sizable is. board to oversee a right. not that <laughs> large of amount of money. Right. That's quite a bit of money. Well, we have like 46000 in that budget right now. I think we discussed last, when they came, it was like 56 and we gave 10000 away. So we should have about 46 Yeah, there's still, there's still a large amount. Yeah. There is, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, on to the event. What, the, what are you talking about, fireworks event? Yeah, for July. Well, not just fireworks. It's a an all-day event. But what Tina said in the past is, you know, we've paid for, like, one segment of it, like uh, music yeah. or something like that. That's what has been like done the traditionally thing. in the past. Right. Paid if, for it, performers. If, it, if it helps. Well, they pay yeah. themselves again. That's their own fund that they're paying out of. Okay. Yeah, we we haven't paid the anything for that bluegrass at the lake trip train to guest tax. No, right. that's no. what. No, right. either. What are the? What I'm asking on the hotel, the difference between the two. One is for the fireworks. Yeah. That's what you would. Right. That's the train to guest tax could be used for utilized for that. The one with the, the 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 hotel tax that would cover banners, newspaper. Um, posters that would cover the advertising thing that would free up the donated money that came to us to be able to use for the prizes the, the expense of the of, of the day so, you think so there is a place I can give you receipts back for what the money is used for okay but but as far as this is concerned it's for the board it's all one request because okay. it's all the same money that you're asking I, I, I understand. yeah okay go ahead Brandon. Yeah. George, appreciate you coming here and not have to buy a gun and all of that, you know, appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, when you talk fireworks, uh, I come from a town that fireworks is, I live in Peabody, and fireworks is a big tradition in Peabody. But we also have Florence has started their own tradition. It's like uh, you guys have in Ramona, you guys went a long ways with your, because I'm here for the first year or two years, what was happening up there, and there's a lot more here than what there was then. Then you also have all me they do a fireworks show um, and I don't know of any others in town or in the county right now that has a list of fireworks that I know of I think the church is an all me I don't believe it's I don't know if they say it's public or not but uh, I think that I think it is public but I don't think yeah yeah I don't know the church right. sponsors it. Yeah. church sponsors it so I'm just warning the board that to be careful with and they all have celebrations somewhat similar to what we see here in front of us so as we play the fair game, I, I, I want to play the fair game all the way around. So mm -hmm. that's all I got to say. Thank you, George. I just want I appreciate you bringing this to us because we want to see. So Brian, what good. would you say would be maybe a fair way? Or what, what are you thinking here? Because we are giving for different whatever the event is, Oktoberfest mm -hmm. or whatever, to some of these communities. Um, how would we, just off the top of your head? Um, I mean, I don't know that there's anything that precludes you from doing it. I, you are going to have to, to be uh, somewhat astute about how much you give in each instance and what you want to do in that yeah. regard. But it's certainly permissible for you to do it. You want to establish some type of policy, have some board, because it's always going to come to you. Mm -hmm. um, for future references, those will become more frequent requests, mm -hmm. if in fact they are. Yeah, because we, we would need to have some type of, we'd have to have some kind of level Max. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. I, but you well, know, we had really, I'm, I'm really, you know, with the whole county, it's only fair mm -hmm. that yeah. everybody has an opportunity. Well, I, I agree. Exactly. I, agree. I mean, yeah. so just because we have to make that policy up, we need to just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Tracy, you have something? Um, I've been on the Florence Labor Day Committee for 20 plus years. To my knowledge, we've never requested money directly from the commission for any part of our celebration. We generally send out a donations letter asking anybody who <coughs> has the wherewithal to make a donation to uh, our event. So is that how And if they donate at a certain level, then they get to sponsor an event. So that's the way we've done it. And, and I'm not saying you shouldn't come and ask them because they got deeper pockets than you do. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, and it is a county, it's for anybody in the county, not just in Ramona. You know, but to my knowledge, we've never made a specific request 
but we have sent out donation letters asking for anywhere from $25 up. And you sent those to the county? I'm not county? sure. Have yeah. you ever seen yeah. one, Tina? Yes. Yeah, okay. because I think that's how the yeah. request that's came. That's how the request came. Yeah. The last Mel time. Melanie sends the letters. Okay. Yeah. So, so now you, the thing that in discussing this initially, because um, this money does need to be used for tourism. It does need to be allowed to be used by the whole county. Mm -hmm. um, and so initially I had had some started some conversations, as Randy Collett said when he was here the last time, um, with Randy and Anthony Roy as economic development people. Um, what would be an appropriate way to apply for these funds? What would be an appropriate way to dispense and to come up with a plan, you know, to present to the board for approval? We didn't get very far um, on that because th we just did it. But um, if one thing that came up in that conversation that you should be aware of, I mean, I, for the instance, the city of Peabody, I know that they have, they do their Peabody Sunday cruise, they do a fall festival, they do a, they're starting to come home for Christmas, um, and then they do their big Fourth of July celebrations. And so, Right now, there's a lot of money in the fund, and so, but going forward, if that is, you know, allocated out, you will probably have to come up with some sort of a, a way that, where you say we're going to support each community, but with to a maximum number of this many per year, or, you know, something like that. Well, that's really fair. So, right. was uh, Randy and Anthony receptive to trying to put something together? Well, it doesn't pertain so much to Anthony over in the city of Hillsborough because they have their own transient right. guest tax. And so theirs is to be used. They use that within their... Right, but I mean, he's professional at it. Right. And so that's why I had actually brought him in just as a... just to start the conversation because these funds need to be made available to the communities. And we were just looking for a starting point. Um, With that being said, would it, I, then it probably would be appropriate if the city of Ramona would request a donation similar to what Florence does, and then we could determine what type of donation we would want to make for their celebration. Is that necessary to do that at this time? I mean, of course, the laws. It, it's not a requirement, but it's it, again, it's back to what you guys want to have and how you want to field your request. I would have more than happily filled out anything. Yep. You have nothing to fill out. Nope. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Right. And the information isn't put out to our community. But you're, mm -hmm. uh, right. and we that's got lucky and found out about it. But do you, you solicit any donations well, uh, similar to Florence sending out a, a form saying would you be? If On the normal it? donors, yes. Um, Prime example, I talked to Ronald MacArthur Friday. Uh, they're going to donate, and who knows what it'll be. But um, I set it up with them so that they could bring a banner out and some salesmen and sit there with some trucks. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of a give and take yep. kind of deal. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, this I found out about day. last week. Mm -hmm. um, if I hadn't known about this, I would never have <laughs> known it was available. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's not being put out to the community. Um, if I'd have known it last year, I'd have definitely been here last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you talked to me last year. <laughs> yes, and I mean, with my advertising, I mean, I'm putting out five, six hundred dollars out of my pocket to pay for this event. Um, I'm a disabled vet. That's all I get. Um, and for me to pull it out of my pocket, I don't think I'm asking for for, for my county to, to help with what's already there for these things. Mm -hmm. um, this is the only way we have to promote Ramona right now. Um, instead of it, instead of Ramona being promoted as, as the methville of the county, we've finally got the sheriff's department up there running them out, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to promote it as something that's good. That's awesome, and they are doing so good. So the request is for fifteen hundred dollars, and it's really towards towards this event, right? Toward that for event. advertising. Yes, for the advertising for this event. and and going into the fireworks, and the more we can get people into Ramona, the more we're going to be able to build Ramona up. Um, if you'll notice, the name of the celebration has been changed. It's not Redneck in Ramona. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. We're trying to move away from the stereotype the town had been given. Mm -hmm. And 
and this is what we have to promote it. Um, you know, we're a small town. Honestly, we're a bedroom town now. There are no businesses left. Um, and the only way we're going to get businesses in is to start bringing people in, seeing what's there, seeing that the town, yeah, it's cleaned up. All the, all the tree limbs that hang over the roads are gone. That everything's being maintained, that the buildings are being maintained. And we'll start getting people that are looking for some place to put a business to bring it in, which also brings it into Marion County. It brings it across that Dickinson County line. It might not be far, but we're bringing it across the line. Is this out of the bed tax that you're mm -hmm. looking at? Yep. Yeah. Well, I definitely think we need to support them in some way. Oh, I, mean, I agree. It's a it's an admirable thing to do, for, especially for small towns to try to. Let's just take the three: the how will Florence, how will Peabody, how will Gossel, uh, Thresher Days. Uh, I'm trying to think of what. Lincolnville has something. October, October, October Fest, isn't it? Yeah. And Burns does. A, they just did their, um, their Memorial Day event. Memorial Day deal, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, actually, so, Lehigh, doesn't Lehigh have a, they have an engine show on yeah, that's Memorial Day? That's 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 so, see, what I'm talking about is there's at least, you're talking maybe 10, and so if you did $500, that's $5,000 a year mm -hmm. uh, as, mm -hmm. as an event. And then we know that some towns have more, but I think you still have to set a limit. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, maybe the 500 went to one, and if, if next year there's another event in that town, one of the 500. I, I, I'm just throwing out suggestions here that to be fair with with everybody and the and the tax and the money and stuff like that. That's so. That, how many did you come up with? Five? Did you come up with five? Five, five right off the get go. Yeah. Okay. Without so even thinking. at a thousand apiece, that's um, that's five thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there more? Is there I mean, oh, there's, 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 Hand. And then the same with the other communities um, that want to do it. I don't think that's too much to ask out of that fund that we have right now and be done with it. If every, if, what, where would we be if every community came in for the thousand? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just curious. I, asked, I, mean, I mean, if, if every community, I just, yeah, I mean, you, 12,000 right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 12,000. But you're helping everybody then. That's a fair distribution. You're helping everybody for the first year, and then we can set up can how we, we want to go next year. Fund that much per year? Well, right now we can. Yeah. We have a lot of money in that yeah. fund right now. And I think that's what she's saying. Yeah. For this first time. For this first time. time. Right. Well, I think we need to start somewhere. And we certainly want to offer. I Maybe. feel like we need to offer a helping hand in some in some way. Maybe you set a thousand dollars up or so. If, if you do that, then and we're hearing from five or six, maybe seven different you, things in each town that goes on. I just want you to think about. You know, you well, this would be on an annual basis. Yeah. It wouldn't be per festival. No, okay. no that's not what my point. Would okay. be. She, I think, what you're saying is per community to go towards whichever festivals. Right. Yeah. Thing. Or combination, however they want. Yeah, you know, they may have two festivals, and but they yeah. give that up the way they the see it yeah. fit. Not for new yeah. festivals. Then who do you pass no. the, the uh, buck to That's to true. do that? The city council. Yeah. <laughs> in Florence, it's the chamber of commerce for all the well, one event. Well, you have chamber there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then it, you also have you have already given money to Marion to the merchants for A promotion for. Promotion. Mm -hmm what the projects that you approved for them but yeah. you didn't specifically say it's for a festival that they would have so yeah. then would you include that yeah. in the, yeah. you know are they are they well, capped at what they've already received or you know yeah i think we could count that as the same right mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you might have just said it, that it's per community, there's only so much that we're going to be able to give. Uh, that's something that's entirely up to each community. Well, I think that would be a better way for doing for us to do it as a commission yeah. rather than a yeah. per event request. Yeah. And then, yeah. gee, one community ended up with 5,000, one ended up with 1,000. Oh, that's all we don't want. We don't want to do that. So, if you have something you want to say. Oh, I was just going to say, like, uh, Tammy put those flyers up for the merchants meetings um, out there at the table out there so it's something that like some of these smaller communities that want to be promoted and want their help too it would behoove them to also go to those meetings and see how collectively they can ask for them and maybe that would then be the board that you guys are talking about would kind of be the onus on them to say hey look you guys can gather up all the small communities and they go to those meetings and they ask for the because I think that it kind of, you have to. It's kind of like what the statute yeah. says. Kind of like. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Do you have an <coughs> estimation on how much that bed tax brings in for you? I don't have that all in front of me right at the moment. Because you, know, you said that 12000 I mean, dollars we, we you're only bringing in $6,000 a year. Yeah, we have, dry up we have a fairly. Well, right. No. So. We have a fairly good balance right now, but going forward, we don't know what that's going to end up. I mean, Every once in a while, the lake runs out, you know? Yeah. Not right now. So, you know exactly about how that works. so rather than just addressing yeah. Ramona's request, should we address a request that would come from a community for festivals or festivals with a limit from the county annually? Mm -hmm. That's my question to the commission. I think that's good. Yeah, if if the lake don't run out. That's all that's all yeah. we're talking yeah, about. We, like we need to know that first. Yeah, it's, 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 gonna, it's, it's gonna be subject to change. Yeah, and it can be yeah, it can be that and just review it every year yeah. to yeah. every one of those policies at yeah. twice yeah. at least I always do yeah. yeah. but subject to fund availability. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. bottom yeah. line. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, does somebody want to make a motion that we address that? Well, I will make a motion that we go ahead and address that and for the first year, until we get everything worked out, that we go ahead and grant $1,000 to the communities um, for events, or <coughs> advertising, or um, marketing, or however you want to call it, to each community a one-time deal. Purpose is consistent with the statute. Right, purpose is consistent with the statute. Subject to change. Subject to change. Huh. <laughs> and fundamental. And fundamental. And when, and when the Got it. Exactly how I before. said that to you. I won't get it. Okay. okay. Does the commission understand Diane's motion? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and subject to change and availability is something that will change depending on what the income is. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll go ahead and second that. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So we would be funding Ramona in the amount of $1,000. Okay. Thank you all very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Very much. And good luck. I am not looking forward to the 6th. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can do yours on the 6th, I say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll be a long day. Yeah. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is now 12.20 and we're scheduled for a lunch break, which we will pass, and we will adjourn until 1 o'clock. I have. Oh, um, I don't know exactly where Randy is, but we're going to resume back into session. So at this time, uh, April, are you with us? I am. How are you? I'm with us. I'm here. I'm here. April Swartz, Marnie Associates. Ken Becker, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, we are here to present the audit for the 2018 year. And I'll pass one out to each of you. There's a letter in the front. So first of all, I'd like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to bid on your work. And I feel like it's probably the smoothest transition we've ever had on an audit client and most of that goes to praise to Tina because she was very instrumental in helping us to get what we needed from the prior auditors. They were very gracious to assist us as well. Hi, hi. Uh, April Swartz with Mars, and so we're here to present your audit. Yep. So uh, we received a lot of the information ahead of time electronically, so that's, the, you were talking about phones and can we live without them. Uh, no, we can't live without technology. 
Uh, we use it every day and it changes all the time and I hate change but I, it's usually for the better but I'm one of those old school I just if it's working why do we have to fix it yeah. you know why do we need to upgrade uh, but we did receive a lot of information ahead of time electronically and so we do as much of our work in our office as we can to make less interruptions on the uh, administration of the county so then we did come out a team of three of us came out and actually did the on-site field work um, and then we prepared the draft and sent it to Tina um, and one of the things I wanted to say about Tina is we have a lot of governmental clients um, and there's a new terminology out there it's called ski uh, it's knowledge uh, do they have the uh, the uh, significant knowledge of the information are they skilled in what they're doing and do they have the education behind what they do and very few clients are able to prepare their own financials but Tina does prepare the bulk of these financials so that's unusual we only have three clients out of about 50 that do that so high praise to Tina for that and we do appreciate that because these are your financial statements they're not our financials our responsibility as we'll see in this letter is to issue an opinion on them <laughs> uh, but they're your financials and you're responsible for what's in them and that's why Tina takes such great care to review them and make sure that everything matches what she feels like it should uh, because things can happen and we can get things reported incorrectly we're very blessed you are um, the letter that's included is called the required communications letter this letter is where we would put anything that we found that we felt like needed the attention of the governing body um, this is a clean letter we do not have any comments um, we found no statutory uh, violations of any kind or anything within the system of internal controls that we felt warranted being addressed by the governing body um, so it's a clean opinion and it, or a clean letter and it does again reiterate the fact that these financials are your responsibility and our job is to give you an opinion as to whether we feel they're fairly stated in all material respects so you might say what does that mean exactly well that doesn't mean we look at everything there's no way we can look at everything that doesn't mean there can't be an error that doesn't mean there can't be theft um, what it means is we feel they're fairly stated and person looking at this they would not be off enough that a person would make a decision based on these financials that would be uh, faulty um, we do test for fraud we do look for things um, that's what we're doing when we're looking at that internal control structure to try to see if there's checks and balances in place within the different departments uh, making sure one person doesn't have too many powers of authority so that they can override the controls uh, we don't issue an opinion on the internal control but we do look at it to determine what areas we feel are the riskier areas and where we feel we should concentrate our time uh, so just a little bit of a nuts and bolts of what we do so we're not only looking at the numbers like i said we're looking at the system of internal control we're looking at the kansas statutes that apply to counties uh, to determine if you're in compliance if there's any material non-compliance um, one of the things that we were able to obtain from the prior accounting firm which we were very grateful for were the summaries of your processes again Marion County is above and beyond any others that we have as far as having those written procedures and processes so that was very helpful it saved time of the staff and it's time for us as well because those didn't have to be redone so then we'll look at the actual financial statements themselves um, if you'll turn to the to page one this is our audit opinion this is a clean opinion um, this is the uh, the cleanest highest form of opinion you can receive on your financials and as you know the county reports on the KMAG regulatory basis so you do basically cash basis statements um, and so do almost all of the counties in Kansas with the exception of the unified government in Kansas City so you're following the same model that almost all the counties follow if you turn to page three and four this is actually the financial statement for the county uh, this is a summary by fund of the beginning cash balances receipts disbursements and ending cash balance of each of the funds within the county so down the left hand side uh, you've got your general fund and then all of your other funds following um, and then if you'll turn to this next page four you'll see the totals for the year so the beginning cash was 12 point 12 million 136 thousand you took in almost 18 million you expended 18 four with a remaining balance of 11 six and then you can see down below where that money is located within the county uh, we then tie each a cash balance by fund to the cash in the bank and show the reconciliation of the cash you'll see the large number that gets subtracted next to the last line less agency funds these are the funds that don't belong to the county so these are taxes that have been collected on behalf of another entity and they're sitting in the accounts to be distributed and those are summarized toward the back which I'll point out when we get to that the next several pages are the footnotes and these are required they are a required part to help you understand the financials better 
Um, Diane indicated she does read all of these audit reports, so she's going to have nice good reading for the next few nights to get through all of this. Um, these notes would not be any significant changes from what you would have received in prior years. Um, the first note summarizes your basic accounting policies and the fact that you do use the Kansas Municipal Audit and Accounting Guide regulatory method. Note two talks about your budgetary information, how counties budget. Um, we're gonna Note three, you'll notice if there had been any statutory violations, which would be like a cash basis violation, a budget violation, um, not following, not uh, publishing a treasurer's report, anything that would be statutorily non-compliance would be in note three, which there were none. Um, note four talks about your deposits and investments. You do have some money sitting in the Kansas Municipal Investment Pool. 963,000 and so this is a required footnote that talks about that pool and how it is uh, collateralized on page 8 at the top talks about the county's cash again the balances in the bank and the fact that the cash was adequately pledged secured at the end of the year um, and then we also look at your system of collateralization and how you track that and so we spent some time with the treasurer and went over how she makes sure that her the deposits are covered um, and then uh, the, the other notes, post-closure, this has to do with uh, the post-closure care costs. It's just informational, no numbers in this footnote. Any capital projects that are in effect at the end of the year are disclosed in note six. And so these are projects that have been approved by you as a governing body and the expenditures to date for those projects. It's a required footnote for KMAG. Page nine is a summary of the debt of the county. So you can see that you have two bonds outstanding, two general obligation bonds outstanding, actually one because one was paid off in 2018. So you have one outstanding bond with a balance of 175,935. You have a revolving uh, loan with the Kansas Department of Transportation. And then you have various equipment leases that have occurred. And so this shows you your balance at the beginning of the year, any additional debt you incurred, which would be the ambulance lease any uh, reductions that you had experienced and then the balance at the end of the year and the interest paid on the debt. All the debt payments were timely and in accordance with the amortization schedules for the debt. Page 10 is a summary of the uh, outstanding debt and the repayment schedule. So it shows you how much you expect to pay in, in uh, interest and principal each year throughout the life of the debt. Okay, moving, any questions so far? Am I going to? Okay. Uh, page 11, this footnote at the top, you know, as you know, you're part of the CAPERS plan. And a few years ago, there was a new regulation passed, and it affected KMAG, that indicated that CAPERS is underwater, as we all know, and that each county and each city and each school district that has a piece of that is supposed to recognize in their financials that piece of the underfunding. And so, in the case of counties, you're not required to record that on your books, but you are required to footnote it. So, if you look at note nine and you go down to the second to the last paragraph in note nine on page 11, you'll see that the outstanding uh, net liability would have been 3,200,000 at the end of 2018 for the county share. If capers ended and the county ended, that would be how much you would have to put in to bring that system back to whole. Now that's not going to happen, um, we know that, and this number does tend to decline because they've done some better investing, um, they've raised your contribution rates in some cases. And a, a lot of governments when this first was passed were very confused because they're like, well we pay what we're supposed to pay every year, why, do we, why is there a deficit? Well that's just because the model that they used wasn't adequate. And so this is the note that discloses that. Cities that record, report on the full gap basis were required to record this and book this number. And for the city of Manhattan, that was a huge number, which threw their net assets to a negative. So there was a lot of upset people when this was passed. But for KMAG, you only have to footnote disclose. And they're not making no more poor investments. Huh? Well, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm that. Nice. I'm not going even going there. Okay. Uh, okay, so then on through the notes, I'm just glancing to see if there are any others. Uh, note 12 at the top of 13, page 13, talks a little bit about your operating transfers that you transferred to Interfund. So General Fund put some money in the Capital Improvement Fund. Road and Bridge put money in the Special Road and Machinery Equipment Fund. Noxious Weed put money in their capital uh, account. And then Special Road and Bridge transferred some funds as well. That was a closeout of the fund. That 635 was just a closeout. 
And then note 14, there was a subsequent event. The county did in, enter into a lease agreement in January of 2019 with Marion National Bank for a John Deere backhoe loader. So since it occurred in January, it's not included in the debt summary, but we did feel it was significant enough that we would mention it as a subsequent event. Any questions so far? Okay, page 15. This is one of the required uh, schedules at the back where we compare what was budgeted by the county. So your far left-hand column is your certified budget that was published. If you had adjusted your budget, um, we would have a column for that, but, there, but you did not. And then you're comparing your total budget for comparison to the amount that was expended in each fund. And you can see that all the way down, now the brackets are confusing, but brackets are good on this schedule. Um, we used to say favorable, unfavorable, but the state changed it and they want over and under. So you were under budget on all of your funds, uh, actual expenditures compared to budget. So overall you were 10 million under budget. So that's very good. The following pages are all the individual funds, which I won't go through each one individually, but we'll walk through the general funds so you can kind of see the way it's set up. Um, the first page is your receipts, and of course the general fund is the major operating fund for your county, so it's going to have a lot more detail than the other funds. Uh, your, your receipts are broken down in categories, taxes, intergovernmental, licenses and fees, uh, use of money and property, and then other on the following page. Um, again, these schedules from here back, Tina did prepare for us, um, and so these give you the prior year actual, the current year actual versus your current year budget, and then your variance again, over and under. And remember, the brackets, you know, can be good. It depends on if you're on revenues or expenditures. <coughs> Looking at page 17, you can see the total cash receipts for the county for 2018 were 5747926 You budgeted four million five, so you actually took in $1.2 million more than you anticipated taking in in that, in that year. And we and when when we do budget, we budget conservatively on revenue. So you would expect us to mm -hmm. receive more revenue than what you budget. That's just a yep. kind of a an approach that has always been taken in regard to the budget. Good, good approach. Mm -hmm. Federal government could learn a lot from you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that. The next several pages are the expenditures, and they're broken down by department. So we'll just look at the county commissioners and see how they did. So their budget was 66000 and they only expended 578 so you're under budget 8000 for a county commissioner. So good job. Good job. Uh, now you can just go down through the report. Now the budget law applies to funds, uh, funds in total. So even if a department in the general fund went over budget, that's not a violation as long as the total fund did not go over. Um, and you will have some that will go over because the budget is an estimation. You're never going to be able to anticipate everything that could occur. But what you want to avoid is having a department that continuously goes over their budget because they know they're not. it's not a violation, but it does take away from the good that the other departments have done. So even though it's not a violation, it's good to keep each department in line with their budget. Uh, so if you'll turn to page... Uh, 21 that will be our totals for the general fund um, they're in that next to the left column next to the furthest left you've got total expenditures of five million eight your budget was six million for the general fund and so you were under the under budget by two hundred seventy two thousand in the general fund and that's at the on page 21 that's good so then the rest of the schedules behind are all of the other funds and they're presented that same way not as much detail because they don't have departments the general fund is the only one with departments so I didn't plan to go through each individual one unless you want me to um, but as I said there were no budget violations and no cash violations so and the only journal entries that we made were some reclass entries for presentations so the numbers you're seeing here are the numbers that were presented to you by Tina at year end so nothing's been modified but they have all been checked. They have all been checked. Yes, yes, that's what we did. Yeah, we check them and then you check <laughs> us. So, and the one I delivered this morning, we have four stages of review in our office. So we have accountants that do it, managers or partners that review it, a tech reviewer that reviews again, and clerical. And I had a date that didn't get changed at the top. And you never see it till you stand in front of the group to present and you're like, I've looked at that how many times and I missed the date. So I think the dates are all right on this one because Tina really does check it thoroughly and we really appreciate that because 
like we said, these are your numbers, especially the first year, because we have to get everything set up and grouped, and hopefully the way she likes things grouped, and then you know make that all match. So I felt like the transition was smooth um, on our end, and I hope that your staff felt the transition was smooth. When you go from Scott Lloyd, you're going from the best. Okay, Scott Lloyd is the leader in the industry, and so I know that changing from that firm probably wasn't something that a lot of people wanted to do. But we appreciate the kindness and the appreciate and the cooperation that we got. So, so that would be my presentation. Unless you have further questions. Appreciate your review and appreciate how it's laid out. I think a lay person can understand what you've got there, and that's, uh, that's what we want to see. And if you have any questions, Tina has my contact information. Um, our fee includes any consultation throughout the year. So if you have questions, concerns, uh, if their staff has questions or concerns, we do not charge extra for any of that. Call us um, if there's an area you want us to look at on the next audit, that kind of thing. We're here for you, and you know we we'll work for you. So, Appreciate all right, you. Awesome. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Also, thank you, Tina, for your work. Yeah, thank, thank you, staff. You're welcome. All the legwork to get that ready. Get it ready. It takes a lot of work. Well, we are ahead of schedule. Uh, Okay, well, I can have her come if she's not. See if she's available. Okay, personal. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. How long do you want to shoot um, for here? I'm not. I'm not sure where one thing ends and the next begins. So you want to start out with 20 minutes? Yeah, 20 minutes will be fine. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'll move the re recess into executive session and in order to discuss item number one, personnel matters of non-elected <coughs> personnel pursuant to KSA 75-431-9B in order to discuss personnel performance with the commission and Sharon. And Brad. And Brad. And um, Tina's the HR person she could stay to. Okay. Brad and, is Brad around? He's here. Yeah, he's here. Brad and Tina until uh, uh, 153 we we'll resume back in open session. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Probably five or ten minutes at least. Coming in? No. Okay. Out of executive session, no action taken. I move to reassess the executive session in order to discuss item uh, number one personnel matters and not elected personnel. So the KSA 75 431 9B in order to discuss personnel performance uh, with the commission, Brad, Tina, and Sharon until uh, 2 o'clock. And then we'll resume back. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wish that happened. I sued you. Ah. And now we turn around, Tom. Who wants to see me? Out of second <laughs> session, no action taken. Okay. Uh, is, the, is that part of the next? Yes. The record review. Yes. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next <coughs> agenda item. Excuse me. Commission record review. I think that Diane requested that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> go ahead, Sharon. Okay. So is this? Can we go into executive session? These documents are attorney-client privilege. So you would go into executive session with Brad present out of your attorney under attorney <coughs> privilege to review those documents. What, what type of documents did you say? Uh, they're attorney work product, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're not Brad's attorney work product. No. How long do you think we need on this? <coughs> that, that stack of documents that we're gonna read at least an hour to start with, that's a lot of reading. I mean, that's what they are individually there. That's a lot of them. That's what you requested. Oh, is that is that packets for each of them? Yes. Okay. That's yeah. the information that was requested. Not four packets. Well, let's action. start out with 45 minutes and see where we get. Okay. So we'll do a session, the executive session, in order to discuss uh, consultation with our attorney for attorney client privilege. And present to KSA 75-431B to uh, in order to discuss uh, uh, work product with the attorney until 246. And then we will resume back into open session. May I ask a quick question of Mr. Jantz? Mm -hmm. um, are you reviewing content? of the records or are you just reviewing supporting documents that say the, these calls or communications were made? It would be both. Okay, because mm -hmm. if it's just a record of the calls mm -hmm. and communications, that's not necessarily privileged. Yeah, but I understand. Okay. No, this is going to have content and then my mm -hmm. advisory capacity on this and it kind of spills over. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, you I'll take that. Okay. Second by all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody else come in? Uh, need to clarify, reclarify a motion. I inadvertently left off Sharon as an attendee in the executive session, so I'll resend my motion for the executive session and move that we recess into executive session in order to discuss a consultation with our attorney, attorney client privilege, in order to discuss uh, attorney work products. Uh, pursuant to KSA 75-431-9B with the commission, Brett and Sharon, until, uh, what were we saying, two, 45 minutes? Mm -hmm. So that would be 250. Sharon's only going to be in for a few minutes, though. Mm -hmm. For a few yeah, minutes, that's released, it. Yeah. 
but she can be released when we're done. Okay, okay. she can be released. And this is replacing the earlier motion. Yes. Right. Okay. This so is replacing the earlier motion. That, so okay. that's, and then we will resume in the open session. Second. Okay, move and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Coming in. Are we going to? Yeah, dude. Come on. Come in. Come on down. Still stand. Other executive session no action taken. That's the last agenda item on the, for the meeting today. Uh, I'll open it up for any public comment. Most of your public left. That <laughs> <laughs> lasted them. Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. Anyone before we adjourn? Yeah. Uh, Brad has some things he wanted to say before we adjourn. Just a quick overview. Um, I, Mr. Seifert, I think, was in. Is that my pronounced that correct? Seifert. Seifert, sorry. Uh, with the citizen request, if I understand what it was, it was regarding the possibility of putting to a vote. And I'll stop right there because I don't know exactly what the question would be. But let's presume that it's something in terms of allowing um, uh, wind farm activity or additional wind farm activity in the, in the county. And how it's worded is pivotal. But initiative and referendum in this state. Uh, does not exist at the state level. In other words, you can't do an initiative basically as a form of petition, um, either in protest or to legislate from directly from the citizen's perspective. Uh, and it has to be a legislative type of activity, not administrative in nature. Um, and it's not something that's already authorized in another format, such as bond issues and certain other types of things that, that are, so it gets into a lot of what ifs, whether it's even a possibility or not. But the biggest one that I think would be germane in this kind of an instance is whether it is administrative or legislative. And that's not a really simple uh, answer in terms of defining that. The court attempted to do that many times. Um, and there are at least nine AG's opinions that I've printed off um, that are related to this over time. Everything from when people were looking at, do we want to allow a casino in our county to you name it. Uh, there's just all different types of things. And some of those are statutorily contemplated as something that can be challenged or that can be addressed in that kind of a setting. Otherwise, the only option you would have if initiative and referendum is not applicable is an advisory type of a, of a uh, uh, election. And that would be done in a special setting, not in a normal uh, election. We're not allowed to do the advisories there. This one, I don't have an absolutely firm answer. Oh, absolutely, it would, it would be an appropriate petition, or no, it would not. I would lean toward it, it may not be, because we have the ability statutorily to have um, zoning in the counties. And that's something that was created statewide, and every county has the ability to set up um, uh, zoning and establish how they wish for growth or development in their county to be regulated. So that, at that point, once you have that, um, everything that you do really arguably becomes administrative in terms of what you adopt as planning and zoning, how you set it up, what you do with it. So that would be my quick short answer as to why I might be pessimistic as to whether we could effectively accept a petition. But initiative and referendum is the only way that that's going to get before you if it, if it even did under the current circumstances. Um, so. What I would do if someone really uh, were serious with that before they spend a lot of time on it is uh, is probably submit the question to the Attorney General's office for an advisory opinion on that. Um, and just say this is what we got. And the proposed question is as follows, and have whoever was wanting to do that provide that, and then make the inquiry. But that's just a real, I mean, I can go into an hour's worth of explanation on this that you really don't need to have at this point, probably don't want to hear. Um, but certainly can give more specificity to it if we need to. But that's at least kind of a quick 
overview of what it is and how it works and what we'd have to evaluate to determine if it could go forward in that, in that way. Otherwise, you could do the advisory, um, but again, that's not binding, and we'd have to do that at the county's expense in a different setting other than you know, normal election. Yeah, we do have an election on its own. And, <coughs> and I would suggest that as it was with the, ha the candidates and the redistricting and all that, a special Olympic or a special election is very expensive. Adding it to the ballot is not as expensive. But but you don't it, it, if it doesn't qualify to be added uh, to the ballot. Yeah, then then you can't. Then it has right. to be. If it's advisory only, it's, it's not going to be something we can add to the ballot, unfortunately. Right. So. Yeah. I thought when we did the um, added to the ballot, the question of administrator that that was just advisory and we added that to the ballot there is a statutory authority to add that to the ballot right. so that's why we were able to to add that to the ballot there is a, a procedure laid out in statute of how that is done and, so that's and in those instances then you're able to um, oh, okay uh, so there's part b yes <laughs> and, and that's what i mean i could go into a lot more what ifs if we can do all of the ten you know the different um, uh, arms of this thing that go in different directions but the straight line analysis of it really is going to come down to uh, the, the pivotal issue that's going to be dispositive is, is this a legislative function that's being question challenged or uh, proposed or is it administrative and given that really virtually all of this relates to our planning and zoning i suspect it's going to be administrative but the, uh, we can certainly pursue that if we needed to get a more definitive answer from the chief law enforcement officer in the state so that's a, an option for you to consider if someone really wants to be developed. Do you have a comment, John? I have a question. Um, that I think there's a lot of people that think a special election is just a special election and that it's just a piece of paper and it, it's, there's no cost. Uh, just for the record, what is a special election cost? Because a lot of people seem to not understand that it's quite expensive. Um, I don't have those numbers so just in my head. It would be at least five thousand. Ten thousand, fifteen. Yeah. What I remember you saying I was it was, it was about, about fifteen. Well, it's going to depend. I mean, I don't, I don't have those numbers in front. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. but it but would it, be a countywide election, and it would be. And the format that it takes has an impact on yeah, those costs. On cost. Mail in, which is a little different in terms of participation versus okay, we're going to set up the. Booths and everybody's yeah. walking in and yeah. handling everything. Yeah, so that's yeah. all. That all has to be factored into this. But I can say it would be at least five thousand. Okay. So it's just. So yeah, it's five, useful. A lot of people yeah. just no big deal. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but it is. Well, you also key. have to pay for programming of your your voting equipment because you have to be ADA compliant. Even if you do a mail ballot election, you have to have a voting machine available for someone to come in and utilize if they want to vote in that capacity without assistance. Um, there's just a lot of things to consider that add to the cost. And publications and ballot so preparation and yeah. the whole bit it just gets yeah. it gets pricey. Just publications of notices is very expensive. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. That's true. Shut off the machine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other uh, public comment? If not I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we're all pretty well commented out from being out the hall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we commented on all.